building. Construction complete. New construction options. Building. Construction complete. Construction complete. New construction options. Building. Building in progress. Construction complete. New construction options. Training. Building. Construction complete. New APC construction ready for options. combat. Training. Personnel carrier. Missile squad ready for combat. APC ready for combat. Operations underway. APC standing by. Personnel carrier. Missile squad ready for combat. APC standing by. APC ready for combat. Missile squad ready for combat. Yes, sir. Ready when you are. Missile squad ready for combat. APC ready for combat. Training. APC, what's yes, the plan? Yes, sir. Insufficient funds. Commander, hang on. Operations underway. APC, what's the plan? Park it there. APC standing by. Right away. Park Enemy it there. Base sighted. We're coming. Hang on. Enemy Park unit it there. sighted. In transit. Operations underway. In transit. Target confirmed. Hit him. Hit him. We have contact, sir. Let's make this quick! Right away. Hang on. Operations underway. Park it there. Fire! Unit under right away. Unit Target under confirmed. Under right there! Cancelled. Building. Hit him! Hit him! Stay on him! Construction complete. Enemy unit sighted. Building. Hit him! Hit him! Stay on him! Park it there. Hit him! Hit him! Stay on him! Let's make Unit this quick! We're coming. Personnel carrier. APC, what's the plan? We have contact, sir! Commander? Ready when you are. Fire! Construction Stay on him! Personnel him. carrier. Target confirmed! We have contact, sir! New construction options. Building. Stay on him! We have contact, sir! Stay on him! Hit him! Hit him! Take him out! Park it there. Operations underway. Construction complete. Right there! We have Unit contact, under sir! Attack. Stay on him! We have contact, sir! Stay on him! APC, what's the plan? Hang on. Personnel carrier. We're coming. New construction options. Building. Training. We have contact, sir! Hang on. Fire! Construction complete. Let's make this quick! Hit him! Hit him! We're coming. Ready for lift off. Let's make this quick! APC stand by. Orca ready, sir. Stay on him! Let's make this quick! Stay on him! Orca ready for lift off. Hit him! Hit him! Right away. Enemy unit Hang on. Sighted. Operations unit underway. Under attack. Stay on him! Orca unit. Orca standing Orca by. ready for liftoff. These air filters working? Training. Hit him! Hit him! Let's make this quick! Orca here. Pilot responding. Insufficient funds. Orca unit. Return for supplies. Orca we have ready contact, for liftoff. Sir. Orca here. Orca pilot. Approaching target. Stay on him! Let's get to that tip zone. We have contact, sir. Let's make this quick. Hit him. Hit him. We have contact, sir. Right away. Operation is standing by. Systems on. Enemy base sighted. 
Training. On hold. Cancel. Training. Yes, sir. Ready for orders. Orca standing by. I got their code. Race ABC, what's the plan? Engineer reporting in. ABC Place standing by. Is all packed up. Channel's open. Copy that. Orca is on the way. Greetings! Oh, what is up and everyone? Welcome to the channel. The sun is hiding and the magpie is casting. Coming to you guys right now with what is about to be some fantastic, hopefully, Company of Heroes 2 action. Thank you very much everybody who's already tuned in this morning, or this afternoon I suppose, as it now technically is here. It means a lot to me. Um, I was just playing some uh, Command & Conquer Kane's Wrath, which is half price right now on the Steam Store and one hell of a great game. Um, it's not very active, not many people play it, but I actually just think it was basically Command & Conquer Generals, but the best version of that. Um, so yeah, it's just hilarious fun. There are nine playable factions, a ton of maps. If you've got some friends to play it with, it's really good. So there we go. Yeah, that is strong words, and I do appreciate that with all the mods and support that CNC Generals had, that it's, pr I don't know, it's probably as good, but I mean, you can't get mammoth tanks in, in CNC Generals, so... That's a, that's a thing. Um, so, uh, let's see. Um, oh yeah, keen-eyed keen -eyed, um, observers among you might notice that I've done something cool with the, with the background back there, like for now anyway, it's just finally getting uh, moved into my house and I'm unpacking some stuff and things that I've been meaning to do for a long time. But uh, yeah, chuffed to see that that does actually look kind of cool on the camera there. Um, Let's see, so, uh, ba, 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 ba. so first, first game of the day, why don't we just jump straight into the action. Oh, <clears throat> just warming up the old voice there. Let's jump straight into the action here. First game of the day, we've got uh, two players, one of whom spawning in the west as the Vermac pieces, playing the Mechanized Assault Doctrine, uh, claims to be Von Ivan. Now, I can't tell you if this is really Von Ivan. Uh, but I like to think that it is, and um, Mechanized Assault is a Von Ivan-ish thing to do, um, so we'll, we're going to find out. And spawning in the east, it is uh, an American spawning player who will be using the uh, Mechanized... God damn it, I always get the Mechanized and the Armor American commanders the wrong way around. But uh, yeah, he's going to be using the um, Armor Company, uh, and this, this player does claim to be a PFC. So, I mean, there is the prospect of a pretty high level game of Company of Heroes 2 here. Uh, if these two players are not lying to me about their identity. I mean, no, nobody would do that. Certainly not in the Company of Heroes 2 ladder, right? Um, but uh, yeah, we're just going to have to see. What's up there, Fox125? Welcome aboard, friend. Good to, have you, uh, good to have you joining us at the start of today's stream. This is super interesting because we're going to have Assault Engineers versus... Uh, assault Grenadiers. How often do you see that in your average game of Company of Heroes 2? Not particularly often. And uh, yeah, the map here of course is going to be a Vilshanka. And uh, this is still one of the more... Uh, what do I want to say? It's just it's one of the bigger feeling maps on the pool, or at least one of the bigger feeling maps that everybody doesn't veto. Um, so yeah, there is some genuine room for flanking and uh, having and decision making when it comes to where to send your units on the map, that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, it's very much looking forward to seeing what spice these two players are going to be bringing. And spice, I think, is the correct label because when Von Ivan is involved, things always get pretty damn spicy. Uh, just consistently, Von Ivan is one of those players or. Probably the only player who is able to break the Company of Heroes 2 and finish games consistently in under half an hour, which in Company of Heroes 2 is quite difficult and something of a sprint. But Von Ivan finds ways to get it done. Wow, the uh, Assault Engineers actually getting the better end of the Assault Grenadiers there. Very interesting. Up to two squads of Assault Grenadiers. So this is a pretty Von Ivan build. Sprint gets used. It looks like the uh, Engineers are going to try and take refuge in this building, but that's unlikely to help them. Five MP40s blazing in a window against these poor dudes. They're going to have to fall back. Two squads of Riflemen will be joining the Assault, Grenad uh, so the assault Engineers here as uh, PFC diversifies the roster. And Riflemen, you know, those Garands are pretty good. They tend to match up pretty well. Um, 
Oh, really? Is this map this map does mess with the encoding? Ah, uh, you know what? It's true. This map and also Zerg Creep on StarCraft 2. Now, I have been trying to upgrade my internet um, now that I'm doing a bit more streaming, and it would just be nice to have decent internet. I mean, well, more decent internet. Uh, but at the moment, my internet service provider is still not able to respond to those uh, inquiries because, I guess, of lockdown. Every time I try, they're just like, not now, try again later. So, I don't know. To be honest, I could probably think about changing my internet service provider because the one that I'm with is just not great. Um, so, anyway, yeah, um, maybe once I get better internet, then we can increase uh, increase the quality of the video and things like that. But it's also not just me, it's also Twitch, because I'm just a noob on Twitch. Twitch does not afford me very particularly high quality video options or anything like that. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, for now, thank you very much, everybody, for dealing with the the weirdness, the blurriness of the, uh, of the encoding here. Uh, oh, God, it, it is actually really blurry, isn't it? Uh... The problem is the falling snow. Christ. That really does mess with it, doesn't it? I'm watching the stream on a on a second monitor or a third monitor down here, and it is pretty bad, isn't it? Welcome aboard, A-Game. Good to see you in chat there, and Magistern as well. Thanks very much, A-Game, for explaining that it is the falling snow that's causing these issues. God damn, it's really terrible. It, it is watchable, yeah. We can follow the action and enjoy the game, and that is really all that matters, so... I'm going to leave it for now, and hopefully it'll look better in the next game that we go into. Looks like, though, no, for now, Von Ivan is going to reach for the STG toting Panzer Grenadiers, and they're going to come out here and start rinsing riflemen. And, uh, you know, we've seen Vermac players in the past get value out of the Assault Grenadier, Panzer Grenadier combo, and I am slowly coming around to the idea that Assault Grenadiers are actually a viable unit um, for more than just early game rushdown damage. Uh, with the um, squad leader upgrade that they can get, um, they get to six men, and then even in the late game, they can find windows to get stuff done. I'm, st I'm still of the opinion that Assault Grenadiers, their value does deteriorate as the game goes on. That's my opinion. The reason being is because they're a very simple unit. They just move towards enemies to try to deal damage at close range. I mean, yes, they can do other things as well, like capture ground and, and throw down grenades and whatnot. But when it comes to being efficient in combat, that's what they want to do. They want to move towards their opponent and get close and deal damage with submachine guns. And the more indirect fire and the more machine guns and the more vehicles that your opponent has the, the much harder it gets for them to just do that behavior efficiently so i still think that if you're relying heavily on assault grenadiers past the 15 minute mark in the game you're probably doing yourself a disservice that's my feeling it's fine to keep using them just don't be over leaning on them don't you know diversify your roster get panzer grenadiers get grenadiers and and have a three-dimensional core infantry roster that sort of supports itself don't just be leaning on three or four squads of assault grenadiers which i do sometimes see um uh i can turn the weather off in graphics i can do that i will think about doing that um after this game perhaps after the stream um I don't particularly like messing with the settings because I've finally gotten to a place where I like them, but yeah, I mean, I, I grant you it's a bit grimy on the snow maps. Oh well, just think of it as being like an atmospheric filter or something. Um, e game though with the decent explanation of how encoding works as well. Red text is the hardest to see as it gets compressed the most. That's very interesting. Wow, how damn, how damn advanced are video encoders these days? Jesus. Uh, so, we've got the 250 half track coming out with the Panzer Grenadier Assault Group. We've also got a Stuart going to be coming out here. Now, there is no tech for Von Ivan. And there is no tech, right? Yeah, no tech. So, hmm. Hmm. This Stuart seems poised to do quite well. Uh, Von Ivan has, has. Has he put Shreks? Oh, he has not been saving munitions for Shreks either. So, does he just die to this Stuart? Err. Hey Aki, yeah, you've just missed a pretty decent early game. Um, we've got the rare combo of Assault Engineers versus Assault Grenadiers. So some weird stuff going on. Stuff that we don't usually see. Um, so, yep, we're going to have to see what happens here. But the trouble is there's a Stuart on the field. And as far as I can tell, Von Ivan actually just really has no plan for this. And that's a problem. Uh, I mean, you saw the Lieutenant Tech. You had to think it was probably going to be a Stuart. And even if it was Captain Tech, you know, American players are getting great value out of the AA half track these days so um what do we do about the Stuart any ideas anyone we got no Fausts we're a long ways away from having the munitions for Shreks hmm hmm
I'm really confused about what Von Ivan's supposed to do here. Uh, I, I really love that Vermac players are exploring. But... <laughs> probably hard tech into concede. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't seem like the strongest line of play, but I follow your logic there, Datton. Um, MVP mines? Yeah, okay, Aki, that's a real solution, but I haven't actually seen any, and as far as I know, I mean, he's been spending his munitions on something, and he's used to sprint a couple of times, but I uh, wouldn't account for it all, so there must be telemines somewhere. There must be. I just don't see them. Uh, and the American player even does have a metal detector as well, so I'm not convinced that those telemines stand much chance of going on to be particularly good, to be honest. Uh, well, hmm. Oh my god, now look at this, he's getting totally cut the cut off. And this Stuart is just spearheading a brutal assault into the German heartland of this map. And that's a problem. Uh... Where is this 50 cal coming from? Oh yeah, he's got Lieutenant Tech. Durr. Okay, cool. First game of the day, guys. Give me a second to warm up here. <laughs> Americans still are just my least known faction. So sometimes I see a machine gun off of Lieutenant Tech and I'm like, Wait a second, doesn't that come from the captain? No, it doesn't. Um, this is looking really grimy. Uh, we've got Panzer Grenadiers who are quite expensive. Getting ripped and torn by 50 cals and stewards. And American map control is decent. Having said that, though, somehow Von Ivan manages to actually resecure control over the fuel, which is now flowing. He resecures control over the cutoff, is what I mean, crucially, to get that fuel to be flowing in. So, uh, actually, this Stuart is not, like, ending Von Ivan. Under circumstances like this, if you're the American player, do you just get another Stuart? Um, no, because you have to tech. All right, fair enough. But I would be tempted by a second Stuart, because even if... Even if your opponent gets a Panzer IV or whatever, you can try and beat it with two Stuarts and some Zooks or something. I don't know. Actually, you could try and beat it with a Wolverine. That would be pretty cool as a sort of discount option. How much is the Wolverine? Remind me. Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, do you actually need the Major to build it? Oh, wow. It's only 80 fuel, but the fact that you need the Major out to, to get it uh, actually detracts a lot from the value of the Wolverine. Perhaps that's why we never see it, because... You can, you can build a Jackson, and I realize it's 85 more fuel, no, 65 more fuel, which is a lot, but you've done all the teching, so it kind of makes sense to save for Jackson rather than go for Wolverine. The Wolverine, therefore, in an awkward place in the tech tree, to be honest, isn't it? Um, okay, Panzer Shreks are finally done, and now the 250 clown car can start doing some drive-bys on this light tank. Oh, the Panzer Grenadiers stayed up too late in the officer's mess last night. Uh, too much snaps there, and uh, unable to draw a straight bead onto that target. I guess it is challenging firing from a moving light vehicle there. Bundle grenade coming down for an attempt at some damage here. STG is going to be pursuing these riflemen. American forces resurgent in north and even pushing in the south here, flanking this Axis army. But the real story is still this Stuart, which continues to dominate unbowed. Um... Yeah, A-game, you're not wrong. People never built the Wolverine even when the... I mean... I saw. I, I, I think I've cast like two games where players built the Wolverine and just built loads of Wolverines, and it, it didn't look great, to be honest. But then again, it is only 80 fuel. Are two Wolverines as good as a Jackson? I actually don't know, but I doubt it. But the trouble is, I actually just don't know enough about the Wolverine because I never see it, so uh, I'm just not sure. Man, these Panzer Shreks are desperately looking for the Stuart, but as long as he knows where those Panzer Shreks are, he just needs to, just as long as you just put the Stuart anywhere else, you'll be fine. And if we crack the attack, we can see American forces once again setting up camp on the doorstep of the German base. Uh, Von Ivan uh, doing all he can to avoid being forced against the ropes, but it's looking dodgy out here. MG42 manages to find the captain under arc, but he's not going to be able to do anything about this position anytime soon. Finally, there is some tech. Battle Phase 2 is completed. Support Armor Core is done. And Von Ivan is on, what, 81 fuel right now. So probably going for a Panzer IV to help dig him out of these uh, precarious circumstances that he finds himself in. The Panzer IV, of course, will be good at policing this infantry and dealing with the Stuart. But it seems like PFC is already taking the measures uh, to counter a Panzer IV. M1 AT gun, the first, appearing onto this roster momentarily for PFC. And that is well-timed. Look at the size and look at the size, complexity, and, 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 and sheer muscle of this American roster compared to this Axis roster. I mean, I'm not saying that this is a bad German army, 
but it does look a little smaller and feel a little more fragile than the American army. And I suppose that is that is the typical dynamic. Now, hang on a second. The 250 half-track. He only needed one window. He gets in on top of... Oh, he loses the 250 half-track, though. The Zooks off the Lieutenant were pivotal. And was that AP ammo? No, okay, it wasn't AP ammo. And now he could lose his most vital squad here, the Shrek-toting Panzer Grenadiers. To the, to the very unit that they were designed to counter as well. And this is the problem with, with Shrek Panzer Grenadiers. They're a very good supplementary AT unit because they have high DPS and they're very easy to use. You, 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 oh, oh, oh my god, is he going to pursue into the base? Oh, okay, he puts them in the bunker. Von Ivan with the sick micro. Okay, wow. Um, but as I was saying, yeah, yeah, they're, they're very good supplementary AT, but if they are the only thing you're relying on, the trouble is they're actually so fragile that, that oftentimes the very vehicles that you're trying to counter, oh no, Von Ivan is getting ripped apart here, that should be a squad wipe, these boys shouldn't be taking prisoners there, but hang on, what the hell, uh, what, what the Neo here coming through for the German forces, dodging a billion potential squad wipes there, actually, what's Von Ivan, hacks, question mark, jeez, that's insane, um, but uh, yeah, as I was saying, yeah, they're, they're just so fragile. They often get countered by the uh, by the tanks that they were meant to deal with. If they if they've got another AT unit to work with, if they're like hinging around a pack gun, or if they're supporting a Panzer IV or something like that, yeah, then then the Panzer Shrek Panzer Grenadiers are really good. But they are a risky proposition if they are the only thing that you have that deals with vehicles. So anyway, I'm kind of seeing that risk translate. But von Ivan with the sort of quick micro get them into the bunker gonna keep them alive against that marauding Stuart but uh, if we crack the tack we can see the position still grim but he does still control a fuel and a victory point and the scoreline situation has actually not run away from him indeed von Ivan somehow with the lead uh, and now this Panzer IV is gonna come out and once it does as long as von Ivan doesn't do anything too foolish with it I believe the battlefield should stabilize right um there's still only one eight M1 AT gun. I think the American player is going to have a hard time actually killing this Panzer for as long as, again, Von Ivan doesn't do anything stupid with it. So, yeah. Yeah, somehow Von Ivan is leading in tickets. I insane. Good spot there, Fox125. It's kind of nuts. But, yeah. We often see... We, we, I, I feel like we often see American players do this, where they're dominating the field and they're pushing the um, Axis player back into the base and they prioritize going for fuel or munition or keeping the um, Axis player in the base. Some combination of those at the expense of grabbing the victory points. And I, I do understand that because certainly in the early game when your opponent has a load of victory points, it, it is far from your mind the prospect of shoving your opponent out of the game based on the scoreline. Big fight coming down here though, hang on now. As the Panzer IV are going to come through, the Stuart comes through using its, what was that, the, the, the shell shock. And the M1 AT gun gets defeated though. Where's the Zook? Okay, the Lieutenant is here and the Zook gets the kill. There we go. Wow, that Zook is looking pretty sharp. It's, sorry, double Zook on the Lieutenant squad. Uh, and now Panzer Grenadiers actually grab the M1 AT gun to finish off the Stuart. Okay. All right, cool. So at least we salvage something for our Panzer IV. We get the Stuart. Not the best of trades, but it's better than nothing. And now um, we've also got this AT gun, which we really, really want. Actually, if we're Von Ivan, this AT gun is so big. It's taking a lot of fire. PFC realizes how valuable this AT gun is. There we go. Manages to gun down the crew on that one. Now, there are some assault grenadiers who can try and hold, but there's a lot of angry Americans here. 250 half track will lance out once again. Once the lieutenant STG's blazing picks him off. Very nice. Okay. All right. And now, now the now, now the German reinforcements are here. Uh oh. These assault grenadiers are being hung out to dry though. Let's keep an eye on them. We hope that the fallback will come down. The 250 half track coming in deep. Going to go into hull down mode in this forward position here. Panzer grenadiers dismount. STG's blazing. The assault grenadiers in the back are actually going to hold the day. Still no retreat for them, but I imagine they'll fall back in a second. But is the main story the fact that the Germans are not going to be able to grab the M1AT gun here? Not sure, but Von Ivan going a long way towards stabilizing this game. Picking up the Stuart and then killing off a lieutenant. Now if you look in the top left, look in the top right, I actually feel like this is a totally even game in which Von Ivan leads in the scoreline and has decent map control. So how on earth that happened? Von Ivan is ever mastering the Tempest, a, a real connoisseur of chaos. Um, just, just getting work done. That is difficult stuff to do. Emma Duranke, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you in chat, friend. Um, I'm not actually Canadian, but I did just say buddy and friend inside of 10 seconds of each other. Interesting. Um, yeah, uh, you, you've missed um, a really swirling, chaotic early game featuring Assault Grenadiers versus Assault Engineers. And both players giving it everything. Uh, a rampaging Stuart just barely contained with nearly no anti-tank resources by Von Ivan. 
Uh, trading a Panzer IV for that Stuart. And now the game is actually kind of at parity, if not Von Ivan leading, because he's, this, this scoreline advantage is creeping out of hand here. Going to be grabbing another 50 cal here is PFC, but I'm a little bit concerned by the lack of... Okay, sorry. Okay, here's Major Tech. I, I didn't actually see that Major Tech was out. My bad. Well, there we go. I'm not concerned about the lack of Major Tech because there is no lack of Major Tech. And... Uh, Okay, all right. So what's Von Ivan's next move? Do we go to Battle Phase 3? Do we start going for a Brumbar? Or is this going to be a Stug E build? Or what are we going to... Is, is he going to rebuy Panzer IV? Or is he going to save for Tiger? There's a lot of teching options available here to Von Ivan, who has reasonable income uh, defending this fuel at the moment and grabbing the one in the north. Uh, although, I suppose, not quite defending it. And there's actually, now with the 50 cal, he will not be able to hold on to this. Hang on, though. Assault Grenadiers pushing up. They're going to try for the grenade barrage on this 50 cal. And that, oh, it's too late to assist these uh, these Germans here. But they could go for the grenade barrage and then focus fire this rifleman squad. Okay, they're not going to go for the grenade barrage. And they're not going to focus fire the rifle squad either. So they have to fall back. Okay. Remember, uh, the veterancy on assault grenadiers is pretty mighty, to be honest, actually. It gives some radical bonuses to make them relevant in the later stages of the game. Um, we've got one of these squads now up to three stars of veterancy, so that will be quite difficult to kill. Six members strong with a lot of uh, received accuracy bonuses. And they do a lot of... they get a lot of accuracy bonuses as well. Ow. Oh, my stupid RSI. It's already... God damn it, my hand. It's because I've been playing Command & Conquer 3 Kane's Wrath recently. Um... All right, we've got a Wolverine, ladies and gentlemen. So for those of you who wondered what that unit feels like, we're about to find out. And uh, look at Von Ivan go. He's just relentless. He is a relentless killing machine. Um, and mm, this, 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 Wolver this Wolverine is like kind of crazy. I know, right? Again, this is a Fast 22 viewers. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. We've had such consistently epic viewership over the last few streams. Normally, when we get to 40 or 50 viewers, it's because someone raids or hosts, and then, like, people stick around because I rock. Ha ha ha, just kidding. I'm so modest. I'm the best at modesty. Um, but, like, but, but the last couple of streams, we've, like, naturally just accumulated up to 30 viewers or 40 viewers or, or even, like, 45, 50, I think, on one of the streams. So, yeah, it's just epic. All right, well, anyway, here's the Wolverine. All right, so what does it get? It gets the HVAP shells at VAT1, much like the Jackson, and it gets flanking speed. It just has flanking speed. That's the thing you can do. It's more accurate while moving whilst using flanking speed. All right, Wolverine. That's interesting. All right, well, I, I'm, I'm keen to see what the... Oh, demo charge here. And it, oh, okay, Von Ivan going to see that and to take care of it. All right. Assault engineers can put down demo charges, can they? Wow, that's pretty cool. I live and learn. Panzer IV is indeed going to be the choice here. That's where the fuel spending is going to go. 125 of Von Ivan's finest fuel going to go into rebuying the Axis Medium. But uh, is he just purchasing a target for this Wolverine? Because as long as he has no vehicles, this Wolverine is a paperweight. So I actually think if you see Wolverine before you've committed to a vehicle for Von Ivan, surely save for Tiger, right? Or like just save your fuel for something more menacing. Because I sort of feel like this Wolverine only counts if you have a Panzer IV. Well, now we do have a Panzer IV. So here comes a target for the Wolverine. But of course, besides that, it's also very good against all of the American infantry and, you know, with the right engagement can totally kill the Wolverine. So I do appreciate Von Ivan does want access to a medium tank and he's going to have that uh, Panzer IV. Um, oh, Magister, and thank you very much for the kind words in chat there, friend. <laughs> um, the only Wolverine I want to see is from Steel Talons. Ah, oh, sick Kane's Wrath knowledge there, matey. Absolutely, the Titan and the Wolverine. i got to be honest with you, though, friend. I, um, Jono, I, I played Steel Talons quite a lot, and I just prefer regular GDI. I'm much better with them. Steel Talons do kick ass, though, and I probably don't understand all of their benefits, but um, I just really like APCs with rocket dudes in. That's my favorite early game rush, and you can't do that with Steel Talons, so puts me in a tough spot. Anyway. Uh... Yeah, fighting continues to swirl around the middle of the map. Still about 100 tickets separating these two players. As the Wolverine going to engage into the Panzer IV here, and we may have an opportunity to investigate how effective it is against the Axis Medium. S tracking for it in Fog of War, not going to find it, and wary of pursuing too far unsupported into Fog of War here. So the Wolverine going to sneak back for now to, to repair. Panzer IV also probably going to try and hook up with some Pioneers at some point. Uh, where are the Pioneers? Yeah, they're in the hood, so could come across and repair that Panzer IV in a sec. Ah, oh, Vilshanka. Does tend to make for good games when they're not super one-sided in the early game. If we get to a mid or a late game, Vilshanka almost always becomes really interesting. That's sort of my experience of it. 
Railgun Titans are strong OPS, Jono, but then so are Railgun Mammoth Tanks, and so are Railgun Scorpions, so I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, the Titan is better for the money, but it's like, I already feel like we have good Railguns in the GDI list, so do we really need... I, I appreciate you trying to make a point. You're trying to trying to champion the Steel Talons here. I appreciate that. Oh no! Panzer Grenadiers hung out to dry. A rare unforced error from Von Ivan there because he's microing a shit ton of units up here. The Wolverine gets the better end of the Panzer IV with the M1AT gun there for support. But the 250 toting, uh, sorry, the Shrek toting uh, Panzer Grenz in the 250, they're not going to dismount. That's on. They're so low. They will get the Wolverine and then have to fall back. Will they be wiped? No. He's up to three squads of Panzer Grenadiers, even having just lost one. Wow. Is that because he just called in a Panzer Grenadier assault group? I feel like I feel like he probably just did, actually. Um, of course, yeah, that's where the 250 came from. So, all right. And there's just another Wolverine already out. So, I think it's fair to say these Wolverines are doing okay against Panzer IVs. Like, well, against that Panzer IV, at least. Um, got the kill. I know it had help from an M1 AT gun, and I know that there are Zooks around the place, but looked to be hitting and penetrating and doing good damage and that's really all you can ask for from an 80 fuel tank destroyer um so really interesting cpfc leaning on the wolverine um i was critical of its position in the american tech tree but perhaps it will perhaps if you can get the job done with wolverines that actually frees up your fuel so you can buy whatever else it is that you want um we can get 105 mil bulldozer sherman actually that might that might partner up with the Wolverine really effectively when you think about it. The Wolverine can help you deal with vehicles, and the 105mm Sherman is essentially an assault gun, which allows you to push and put pressure on points and, and defeat infantry. So there's a natural sort of dovetailing there between those two units. Their synergies, you know, they, they cover each other's weaknesses. It's a little bit like using um, a Panzer II Lukes with a Puma, that kind of thing. Um, only much more suitable for the mid and late game, so that's interesting. Titans can shoot through and over buildings where others can't. Huh. I actually didn't know that. Hmm, fair enough. Um, yeah, the 105mm Sherman does feel a lot like the Brumbar. Uh, in terms of its cost as well, they are very similarly priced. Um, of course, I suppose the Sherman is a little bit more, more, more maneuverable and... Uh, is it more armoured? I feel like the Sherman might actually have higher armour with less HP. Uh, and the Sherman can have a 50 cal pintle rather than the MG42 pintle, which sounds like, a, whoa, sounds like a small difference, but it is reasonably big. American forces piercing deep here. Von Ivan needs to control like a god. He's pushing in north. He's lost everything in south. He's going to get cut off here. Panzer Grenadiers with STGs are good. Oh, with Bundle Grenades, they're better. Even with the two Shreks, they managed to bring it to this three-star Rifleman squad. Going to have to fall back. There were even some chances of a squad wipe there. Um, it would have been super unlucky if PFC would have hemorrhaged that squad there. But uh, there, was a, there was a chance there. That's a little bit scary for PFC. Wolverine here going to be escorting these uh, Assault Grenadiers. Ass you know what? I am getting slowly sold on this, Commander. I really am. Elite Vehicle Crew Upgrades. Inc what? Okay, this is a sick commander. All right, I'm just going to go out there and say it. This is a really good commander, isn't it? Because you get the assault engineers who can get flamethrowers, who can lay demo charges, and but here's the great thing. They naturally very well support your vehicles. They're, they're really great, aren't they? they? They just synergize really well with a lot of stuff. Repair critical. Okay, yeah, I remember that. Um, you get the Wolverine, which I'm slowly becoming convinced is decent. Panzer Grenadier squad getting wiped. Um, you get the Wolverine, which I'm slowly becoming convinced is decent. Vehicle crews having an increased repair speed is actually huge, because that materially influences the efficiency of your vehicles, so that's pretty good. You get a sick munitions dump, just fatty boom boom. 250 munitions, yeah, it's expensive, but you get a lot of boom, so... Sorry, I can just hear a lot of noise coming from outside my window. I thought perhaps there was some kind of riot or something. Um, for those of you who don't know, I do live in Bristol a city in England where we've had a lot of um, sort of protests and disruption and um, made the front page of the news actually because the protests in this city in England have been pretty much some of the biggest. Double Wolverine now that we're up to though. Christ. All right, this Panzer IV though. I don't like I don't like the third Panzer IV. Oh my god. Yeah, the Wolverines are good against Panzer IVs, man. They are good. Look at this. They can handle Panzer IVs. Look, look at this. They just don't seem to miss. Flanking speed is epic. Oh, wow. These Panzer IVs are looking bad. Wolverines are eating them for breakfast. 
We need to stop building Panzer Force. I'll be honest, I was skeptical about the second one, and I downright disagree with the third one. Uh, these Panzer Fours are not delivering value for fuel for Von Ivan at all. We need something else. Um, and I, I appreciate Von Ivan uh, is starved for resources and does not want to tech. Um, but Panzer Fours, we are just building targets for our opponent's Wolverines. If we have no vehicles, these Wolverines are really bad. So let's wait until we can actually build a vehicle that can challenge these Wolverines rather than just feeding targets into these Wolverines. Because honestly, I really feel like these Panzer Corps are just adding value to the American army. Jesus, speaking of which, look at the top left, look at the top right. Uh, PFC in a pretty good place. I think most people would probably take 10 to 1 odds or something. Maybe at least 5 to 1 that, that PFC is going to smash this one. So, yeah, this is looking pretty good. <clears throat> we need more KT? Yeah, Magistern. Uh, unlikely to happen in this game, though. <laughs> um, yeah, crushing does work in a little bit of a weird way, this game. There are, there are ways you can force it if you manage to pin or suppress units and stuff like that, but yeah, it's tricky. <clears throat> the Wolverines have a lot of infantry kills. Really? Four. Seven. Are they just killing them with their cannon then? They don't have a machine gun, do they? There's no coax. Is there a coax? No. I don't think they're good against infantry, though. Oh, they're crushing monsters? Are they really? Because they're so fast. Interesting. All right, Wolverines. Oh god, he's got. Yeah, this is looking super over for Von Ivan. We just don't have the resources to. Every time he loses a squad, it is basically just gone. Like he just can't be replacing this stuff. And I take your point about the Wolverines actually being really good on crush. Look at this triple Wolverine build. Okay, everyone. Well, we came into this game skeptical about Wolverines, and I feel considerably less so now that we're on the tail end of this game. Jesus. See what you mean? They are just shoving infantry around. Making it very annoying. They're going to come on in here, and yeah, Von Ivan knows. He knows he's done. God damn, what a great game. That was super sick. 29 minutes, 42 seconds. Well, I said Von Ivan often ends, game in 30 mi ends, often ends games in 30 minutes or left. I didn't really think it was going to look like this, though. Jeez. That was a, just a ridiculous game, wasn't it? Um, absolutely smashed it. All right. Um... Oh, Aki, you have to go? All right, buddy. Well, the VODs will be on YouTube, friend. So, uh, yeah, we'll miss you, friend. Have fun. All right. Let's take a look at the live game lobby and see if we can find another one to uh, to load into next. That was a good one to start the day, though. Ooh. And I might have another good one for you guys. The Wiggly Magpie Finger of Doom. <laughs> Sorry, I've been experimenting with some of the settings on my camera, by the way, and um, I've also finally, I said earlier on, uh, managed to unpack some stuff. Um, so my my front room, which is where I'm sat right now, is um, becoming a little bit more human habitable. Has anyone been playing any of the demos in the current Steam event? I'll be honest with you, the Steam events normally just just pass me by. Iron Harvest? Whoa, 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 whoa. I thought that game wasn't coming out for a while. There's a demo? I might be tempted. I've, I've had my eye on that game for some time now, Mr. Anderson. All right, here we go. Get ready, boys and girls and everyone else. We're fully inclusive on this channel. <clears throat> this one should be a banger because spawning in the south, coming off of a loss, but still an incredibly good player, hopefully, is Von Ivan. And this time they're going to be running with the Ostrapen Doctrine, perhaps an adaptation to this smaller map because it is crossroads. And spawning in the north, playing as the United Kingdom forces, it will be Caesar. So, um, yeah, two super high level players are going to be going at it for our entertainment and amusement here on Crossroad. Ostrapen going to be leading the charge for Von Ivan. And uh, there's been a lot of discussion around on my channel in the chat about the state of balance regarding Ostrapen. Are they okay? Are they too good? Um, are they a thing that Vermax can have access to at 200 manpower without detrimentally affecting the balance of the game? Um, now, 
I will say that the verdict is still out, but Ostropon tend to match up really well against Tommies, and they actually kind of match up really well against against um not Amis. What are the American guys? Riflemen. And um, they actually even match up really well against um, uh, conscripts as well. So they must be strong if they match up well against the core infantry of the other three factions that they will always be against. So that's good. Uh, they don't scale as well later on in the game, of course, that's for sure. And they don't do everything very well. And for me, I think part of the problem is that Ostropin just get Fausts at the same time as Grenadiers. I, I actually think Fausts should be like for Ostropon should be like behind Battle Phase 2 or something? I, I don't know. It feels weird to me that such a cheap squad has the same amazing Fausts that Grenadiers get with no extra teching or cost. Um, that for me is the weird bit. I actually don't really have a problem with Ostropon. I still don't have a problem with Ostropon. I, I agree, they're very strong, but I don't think that they are a problem in the game yet. I've just not seen enough to, to, to demonstrate that. So, Prostropon, is that what we're calling them? Don't know about that. <laughs> Don't know about that. Uh, Jono, that was a Matrix quote. Good catch, sir. <laughs> so, that was a really um, low level, like, uh, under the radar Matrix quote. But yeah. Yeah, it was. Okay, double Ostrophon, double MG42, loving the build so far from Von Ivan, even if it's not especially Von Ivan looking, but then it is quite hard just to sort of, you know, sure you can your opponent in the face uh, on Crossroad, um, at least early on. Vickers Gun as well, going to be added into the roster. Three squads of Tommies supporting that one now for Caesar. Uh, let's have a look at the commanders here for Caesar. We've got Special Operations Regiment. It's Special Weapons Regiment, goodness me. Come on, Magpie. Uh, so this is the guy who gets Crocodile, oops, um, and, oh, the resupply half-track guy, and, yeah, the Tank Hunter's infantry. Okay, I really like this guy. Do Tank Hunters still just, like, eternally detect nearby vehicles on the minimap? Because I promise you that is a very useful ability. Like, super underused, almost criminally underused. And let's not forget, Tank Hunter's infantry were buffed in the most recent patch. They now always have five men independently of whether you have the five-man Tommy squad upgrade. So that just is a buff to that unit. Um, so there we go. We've got the Royal Engineer Geezer, who gets the... Okay, now, I, I want to see more Avas used. I don't think I've ever actually caught an Ava on the channel, ever. And it's a fun... It's like a Storm Tiger light. It's so good, I can't believe it's not Storm Tiger. Storm Tiger Zero. It's, um... You know, it's 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 that, and um, I love Storm Tiger. And if I can enjoy the full flavor of delicious Storm Tiger, but without so much uh, reload time and uh, vulnerability while reloading, I'm game for that. Uh, and we've also got the Royal Artillery Regiment, who I really want to see a, a Wolverine, uh, but not a Wolverine, a Valentine, and I really would like to see a Sexton. Feel like I'd never see those guys. Early warning um is really useful. Concentration is really useful, and I think perimeter overwatch is like pretty goddamn powerful. It's like the twenty-five pounders just fire for like two minutes at stuff that they can see. So British sniper. So that's a pretty exciting commander. Um, yeah. Enemy a capture point. I I would hope to see storm tiger with no added sugar. That's right. Yeah, nat all natural flavorings. Bloody shitting, buggering hell. They did such a good job with the UKF voice pack. They really did. They they got good voice actors who represent, like, pretty much, like, almost all of the British Empire accent spectrum. You've got Australians, Canadians, and then within England, you've got, like, there's a Somerset boy, there's a there's an Irish guy, there's some guy from Wales, there's a Liverpudlian, or is it Manchurian? I'm pretty sure the machine gun is... It's like Manchester, actually, yeah. Um, you know... This just, and you've got the posh Brits, you've got the sort of towny Brits, you've got the London Brits, all of the accents and voices, they're all, all there. Um, okay, actually not all, because there's no Geordie unit is there, but that would be, that would, that, that, that would, that, that would be the icing on the cake. That, that would almost be too much. That would, that would just be like too perfect then. Valentine's are pretty good, is what I keep hearing, OPS Jono. That is what I keep hearing. I, everyone always says, Valentine's are pretty good, but if they're so good, how come no one ever uses them? Um, I appreciate, though, I only cast the games that I cast, and that is a relatively small sample size, so probably I might just be dodging all the Valentine games. Who knows? Who actually knows? All right. The 55 cal sniper is out in a boot. Uh, 
And to be honest, actually, is this an interesting counter to Ostrapin? Because one of the coolest things about building Ostrapin, of course, is that you get to skip Infantry Company. Um, and if you skip Infantry Company, you're not going to have access to the very powerful German Sniper. So, and he's very powerful, of course, because he's a great counter for the UKF Sniper, because he just shoots faster. He's quite good in a Sniper duel against the UKF Sniper. So, um, yeah... But hang on now, Dan. I mean, I know it seems sceptical because Ostrapin are actually not super valuable as targets whose heads to be exploding with your sniper rifle. Per head exploded, I appreciate. The manpower cost is really low. Uh, but the sniper still counters um, MG42s very well. And, you know, the sniper will still turn fights that use Ostrapin. He won't be vetting up as much. He's not countering as much manpower value in your opponent's roster. But he's still turning fights, right? He's still meaning that the Tommies will win in those engagements uh, and, and force the Ostrapin to retreat. So, you know, I feel like this, this UKF sniper is a very interesting and possibly, um, we'll have to wait and see and develop our understanding as we watch this game, but I feel like this could actually be an interesting adaptation that UKF can make to the increasingly Ostrapon sort of Vermac meta. Um, so let's see how this goes. Let's see how this goes. OPS jump. Her head exploded. That is absolutely that is what snipers do, right? So that is the appropriate unit of measurement. Um, Enemy causing trouble. So okay, von Ivan uh, trailing in the score line right now. Caesar has done a good job of uh, grabbing the VPs, but von Ivan looking to redress that now. Been approximately an even game. No massive errors, blunders, or mistakes from either player, and no massive sort of value swings or, or sort of strokes of genius yet um, demonstrated by either player. Uh, we've got some Royal Engineers, two squads of Royal Engineers. Pay attention to this composition from Caesar, because he's doing some stuff out here. It's very interesting. Three squads of Tommies, two squads of Engineers, one Vickers, one Sniper. Is this how you beat Ostrapon? The Tommies provide a good firebase. The Sniper swings fights in your favour. Vickers guns are amazing because they're machine guns. And the boys from Wales actually might be a really good way of pressuring Ostrapon, because if you run at Ostrapon with Sten guns and start gunning them down, like, if you get close to them, they aren't going to be able to hold up to you in a fight. It won't work. So, I don't know. Uh, this is too long of range, though. The Ostrapon will beat you here. <clears throat> I, think he, I think he's just not close enough to ignore cover there. If my understanding of Company Fury is 2, it's about sort of here, the way they would start ignoring cover. So, that's, uh, these Ostrapon are going to win that one. Yeah. Okay. Sniper continues to make a good living, about to vet up. Bonk, there we go. And at vet one, he gets the critical shot. Uh, so it actually could help uh, once vehicles become a part of this game. Machine gun crew awaiting orders. Another Vickers. Yep, I like it. I really like where Caesar is taking this composition. He's like got one fewer Tommy squads than I feel like we're used to seeing. And has one. He has not done AEC, which I think is like really cool. I think too often British players go down the AEC road, and it is quite expensive to be honest. What is it like? 85 fuel, 75 fuel. That actually delays your teching like a ton. And unless there's a reason for that AEC, like your opponent is like leaning into two two twos or like has a sniper or something. I don't know. I feel like we don't need the AC every game. Certainly not as often as we're seeing it. And if you can get to, if we can get to company command post without having teched into AC, that's got to feel pretty good, right? Vickers gun moving into a nice forward position here. We'll actually find these pounds. Great. Yep, they just instantly have to give that up. And uh, British forces are just creeping in, using the Vickers gun, one on each flank to push forward, taking sensible fights. Ostropin are good. But they are very blunt. They are just a unit of force. They don't have any u very useful special abilities. They don't let you do anything new. Um, or turn fights in any particular way. So if you are fighting into a sniper and Vickers gun with Tommy supports, like no amount of Ostrapin are really going to break that. So um, this seems okay. Look at this sniper. And now that this Panzer Grenadier is out, he's, he's, having, a fine old, he's having a fine old day. Uh, we've got M M6 mines popping up all over the place. Look at these Brits. Look at these Brits getting a job done. Oh, this is uh, this is going pretty well. Incendiary ammo comes down off of an MG42 at some Tommies in cover. I'm going to hose those boys down. Looks like they're actually going to stay to capture the point. Whoa, they picked the gunner off. That's frustrating. Whoop, lag spike. Um, yeah, they picked the gunner off. That's frustrating for sure. Bofors in placement. <laughs> Don't get me started on the mortar pit. Yeah, that's probably wise. Um, and look at look at the British noose tightening here. 
Raptors really good. Triple cap, double fuel. This is domination now. Caesar styling a little bit on these uh, Ostrapen. This is just savvy, competent play. And he still has flexibility to pick a commander. He's floating a ton of resources. I think, yep. Yeah, I was just going to say, now feels like the time, literally right now, when you want to click on company command post. And lo, doth Caesar respond. And, I mean, okay, Von Ivan, where is his MG42s? They're the units that he needs to have to be out there blazing. Oh, no, he actually didn't reinforce this one, I think. That's a bit awkward. Hmm. Oh, okay, he gets a Vickers gun. Panzer Grenadiers in this building actually snipe off the Vickers gun. That is an awkward way to have died. Believe it or not, that Tommy is deceased. Interesting. Panzer IV, though, is going to be the next uh, choice out here from Von Ivan. So pretty standard teching. So for this, this looks like the most cookie-cutter uh, Ostropan build that I've, I've ever seen. It's just... It's just the things that you can get without tech. Ostrapen, Panzer Grenadiers, Pioneers, and uh, MG42s. And now we're going to go straight into Support Armor Corps with uh, no Leitha Mechanized Company. So actually not getting... Yeah, because against UKF you don't need to worry about a T-70 or a Stuart or an AA half-track. So that's fine, isn't it? And uh, yeah, there's going to be a Panzer IV coming out here. Now Company Command Post is finished. And there is the fuel there for a choice in the near future uh we don't quite have the manpower but yeah if he wants a cromwell he can get one and that matches up fine against the panzer four or if we want to do something spicy then i'm open to that as well uh but caesar if we don't go for a, a fuel choice in the near future caesar is actually going to be caught out with no at guns here in a sec so that's problematic love seeing good non-cheese brit play absolutely emma Duranke. this is just this is just by the numbers uk forces getting value it will be a cromwell fair enough <laughs> the king did not give him permission to lie down. <laughs> um, yeah, so, alright. It's going to be a medium tank battle here as the Panzer IV and the Cromwell lumber onto the battlefield. And finally, Von Ivan gets some German... Oh, no, he loses an Ostrapen squad. No, he doesn't. Sorry, one of the Ostrapen was actually all the way back over here. He's going to survive. Uh, but finally, some German jackboots managed to get up uh, into the north side of the map. Going to grab one of the victory points at long last. Von Ivan, 200 points uh, down in this game. So that's a rough place to be. That's going to make this game hard as it goes on. But it's, it's just about okay. If he doesn't hemorrhage too many more VPs, he should be okay. And there we go. Finally, German forces stalking forwards, uh, getting getting control at last over the south side of the map, as the British forces are finally exhausted and do need to fall back to reinforce. So that's pretty important. Now here comes the Cromwell. Interesting camo on that one. I like it. And uh, engages immediately into the Panzer IV. Panzer IV gets the first penetrating hit. Ooh, this Cromwell rolling quite poorly. And remember, this Cromwell is pretty much the only hard AT that um, Caesar has access to. So if it's forced out of the fight, this Panzer IV will be able to do whatever it wants to do. He did lose an Ostrapen squad somewhere. Okay. Enemy causing trouble. Try uh, to take one of our points. Uh, okay. Am I right in thinking? Are there any history buffs in the channel? Am I right in thinking? It's, it's like the, the, the Merlin engine is in the back of these tanks, and that's why they keep on like exploding and popping away. Am I right? Is, am I right? Did they just put the engine from the aircraft into the tank? Is that right? Is that, is that actually what happened? I'm not sure. Oh! Cromwell's just going to be policing these Panzer Grenadiers back. That is correct. Jesus. All right. Fair enough. Wasn't that a rotary engine? I'm going to have to Google this. Like not not rotary like a like a Wankel engine. Like rotary like in the cylinder arrangement. Wasn't it like rotary cylinders? Because that's, that's, uh, that's some crazy stuff to put in the back of a tank. Them Brits be tripping. Alright, so the Panzer Fort kind of just chipped down this building in mid to prevent Caesar from getting any further MGs or, or getting any use out of that one. Von Ivan going to grab double fuel here. So that's really nice. He's also going to get that job done. Kind of needs to, <clears throat> pardon me, replace the core infantry a little bit. Like, just maybe one more squad of pioneers I think I'd really like. 
Uh, second Cromwell going to be the choice. Well, okay then. Have we got any commanders that buff Cromwells? Not really. I don't think there are any commanders that especially buff Cromwells, are there? Alright, tank battle in mid. This Panzer IV is winning the tank battle so hard. Gets his first star of veterancy way ahead of the Cromwell. And it, he's going to blitz in. Wow. Oh god, he really wants the, he really wants the Cromwell. He's not going to get it. I like an aggressive blitz, but he gets donked by an AT grenade. Where's the Brit Sniper? Oh, he's not actually close enough to help out with this Panzer IV. It'd be nice if he could get the critical shot in there, and that would enable the second uh, Cromwell, perhaps, to join the fray. Okay, now the first Cromwell is going to sneak on out. He can take another hit from the Panzer IV without dying, and he gets one into the Panzer IV. Whoa. Oh, really? He's being so risky with this. Oh, God, there could be mines. There could be anything. He's just out here in Fog of War, unsupported. There could be even a Faust right now. It's going to be lethal. Pioneers hook up with the Panzer IV. The second Cromwell is out, and I imagine that one's going to start looking for the uh, Panzer IV before it can have a chance to repair. Ostrapen just going to miss the opportunity to stick a Faust on the uh, on the Cromwell. So that one's going to sneak away at full speed. Uh, and there's a Stug G on the queue. Wow. All right. This game's going into an interesting direction. Yes, the Valentine is allegedly a crom command tank. Oh, yes. I suppose that would buff the Cromwell. Nice thinking, Danton. Oh. Okay, okay. Pa Sh Shrek toting uh, Panzer Grenadier is going to take out the uh, the Cromwell there. Nicely done. Uh, and the uh, second Cromwell takes out the Panzer IV. And when the dust settles, the UKF player is in a brilliant position. Leading by, what, 220-ish, 215-odd tickets. Vastly superior army. Uh, the only thing that Von Ivan has right now is decent map control in, t in terms of, like, sectors held. And as soon as this UKF army reinforces and hits back out onto the field, he's going to lose that artillery field officer coming out onto the field. There we go. Okay. How many... Is this 240 manpower for this guy? <clears throat> Let's see if he can uh, make a difference in this game. And he will need to. This UKF sniper as well. 26 Axis skulls exploded. That is quite a few. And uh, here comes the Stug G. Okay, we, we get the critical shot. There it is. And now the Stug is stunned. Oh god. This looks really bad. AT grenade comes through and that'll be a kill. Wow. Uh, is that game? It's very close. Okay, we need to repair the Cromwell, but this is, uh, this is really nasty. Yeah, beautiful kill indeed. That was just by the books. By the books. What's coming down here? Oh shit, that's railway artillery. Sniper, no! Ooh, he gets out of there. Oh uh, man, you don't want to be around when the railway artillery comes in. Oh shh. Oh, what, what did he lose? He lost some Tommies. I'm just watching these railway shells, railway shells come in. So how many did you get? Three? Three shells. Um, see chat above for what is the answer. Rory, the Merlin engine. Damned enemies trying to take a point from us. Oh, okay. Thanks, Emma Dranky. Very interesting. Supply Cheers. Oh, that's very interesting. So they modded the Merlin engine until they came up with the Meteor engine. Right. Okay. Because I was going to say, yeah. I mean, not not that I'm, like, the best engineer, obviously. Um, but my understanding is that, like, a radial engine would be really interesting, to put it mildly, to fit into a tank. But, I don't know. Um, I'm going to Google that later, because I'm genuinely interested. I want to see what these engines look like. Uh <coughs> Okay, Von Ivan doing a lot with a little here, isn't he? Somehow got a squad wipe on a Tommy squad just uh, not that long ago. Oh, we've got a UKF medic squad coming out. Cool. I think this is the first time I've legit seen this used in the wild for its int God intended purpose of healing infantry who come back to the base. It's sort of a three quarter ton ambulance light, if you if you will. Um, so that's pretty cool. Look at look at Von Ivan keep it. Look at look at the map. He's actually pushing with like five squads against a proper British army with with with. With two MGs, great squads, and a Cromwell. This is kind of perplexing. I'm, I'm at a loss to understand how he's doing this. This shouldn't be happening. He's closed up the scoreline to 140 tickets. And he's about to have another Panzer IV, which is, is going to be useful. Of course, weapon racks have finished, and Bren guns are now popping up on these Tommy squads. So that's uh, dangerous. Dangerous. Um... I, 
I just don't understand how Von Ivan is getting all this done. Like, this MG42 is in a great position, but now it's getting sniped down, so it's going to have to give way. This sniper made it to three stars of veterancy. 30 skulls busted. Increases weapon penetration and damage, so it's actually more useful now against tanks. Very interesting star of veterancy to be gaining. Is it two stars for rate of fire? Survivability. Oh, he never gets a rate of fire upgrade. Okay, fair enough. I guess that would be risky for the 55 cal sniper. All right. Uh, immediately going to use the critical shot to dink up this Panzer IV. And the Cromwell can transition across to help deal with that. UKF forces will take northwest. And are probably about to take the midline of the map too. And, and once... Once control is established over the north and north area of the map and the middle of the map, uh, then I feel like life is going to get quite difficult for uh, Von Ivan. Panzer IV trying to take a nice fight here, firing through the hedge uh, at the Cromwell. Oh, but it is the Cromwell who will find damage. There we go, exchanging at each other through the hedge, these two medium tanks. The uh, MG42 is turbo low. The sniper would love to get a wipe on that on that squad, but the fullback comes down in the nick of time. Piat's firing, and this Panzer IV on death's door. Now... The uh, Panzer Grenadiers with Shreks are here, but they can't fire through the hedge, so they're not going to be able to do any. Look at this sniper go. MG going to get set up. Sniper is under the arc. That's risky. Sniper's so low, he's going to lose the sniper. Woo, gets the fallback. And Bren Gun Tommies will be left holding the line. He's actually not pushing on the other side of the map. Ah, oh, it's because it's a Vickers gun. Bundle Grenade comes down. But the Vickers gun will hold here. And Von Ivan continues to be bled out. A Stug is going to be added in. Again, okay, cool. And this Stug ought to be a lot better, because this Stug is actually going to be alive at the same time as a Panzer IV, so it's going to be able to do the whole Panzer IV hiding behind the... Um, sorry, Stug hiding behind the Panzer IV kind of synergy, which works really much better than just having a Stug. Datton, is that for the um, British Sniper? Sorry, just to confirm. That's very interesting. Must be. What's up, uh, Jay Candon? Welcome, friend. Not familiar with the details. Merlin engines were ridiculously powerful for a tank, so they actually had to downgrade them. Huh! Crazy. Okay, Daton, yeah, thanks very much for those veterancy numbers. So it doubles the damage against vehicles. That's very interesting. And it does give him some reload. Oh, reload speed, okay. Uh, and 30% penetration. Okay, cool. Doubling the damage is actually kind of makes him a semi-meaningful source of damage in, an, in a tank battle. If you can just chip in for a bit here and there. If he does enough damage that an engineer squad can break the engine with a uh, an anti-tank grenade, then that's super material then. Because I think without VET-3, one, one Brit sniper round is not still not enough damage for a, an AT grenade to break the engine on a Panzer IV, I think. So that would be a really nice thing to change. Anyway, Panzer IV blazing here, finds the Cromwell in the north, so we've got double Cromwell versus Stug Panzer IV. Uh, the UKF infantry ought to be far superior to everything it's fighting. Whoa, why does he pull that unit back? Oh, because the Stug is coming for a, bre a breakthrough here. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> UKF Sniper on the chopping block. Stug takes a shot. Glancing hit only, though. A little bit of damage on the Sniper, but nothing to write home about. 166 tickets and on the clock right now for Von Ivan, and this is likely to be the story of the game. Um, as long as Von Ivan is on the clock, Caesar is winning this game, even if he's actually somehow getting beaten by this tiny German army, which is just blows my mind, but it's happening. Uh, looks like we've got a commander pick coming down here, and it will be the Royal Engineer Regiment. Fingers crossed. Maybe we, maybe this game goes super long, and we see Von Ivan stabilise, and we get to see a Churchill. Hey, eh? that would be interesting. Unlikely, though. Uh, vehicle crew repair operation coming down there. Is that, was that what it's called? Yeah. Uh, so... <clears throat> Yep, going to use that one to get the Cromwells in fighting shape rather rapidly here. Smoke Barrage coming down here. Who's, who's Smoke Barrage is that? Is that the Artillery Field Officer? Okay, that's pretty cool. And that, he's going to use that to get up on top of... You, you want to get around the Vickers gun, surely. Maybe stand on the other side of it. Ooh. Okay, there we go. Yeah, he forces the fallback on that one. Nicely done. 
UKF player going to start pushing out. Okay, I like this. We finally have a QF six pounder. X pounder. AT gun going to be moving out here. And that, I think, is the, the crucial missing piece of the roster which Caesar has finally put in at the 26 minute mark. This makes a lot of sense. This is going to enable him to push the Panzer Fours, push the Stug. And this is going to be really nasty. <clears throat> All right, swirling melee here in the uh, southeast of the map as Bon Ivan desperately attempts to extend his life in this game. Tommy's mowing down these Germans and the Panzer IV gets his engine donked by a brave engineer squad here. And uh, the German armor battered but not beaten, has to fall back for now. We'll get repaired, uh, hopefully, and a second Stug. I quite like where this roster is going, if I'm honest. The second Stug makes life rather difficult here. With two Stugs, that is very annoying. Now, here comes uh, a 9.75-inch flame mortar support strike. Um, not quite sure. Was that just to displace the MG? I guess so. And now both of the Cromwells have traded out all of their health. The fresh Stug arriving just in the nick of time to prevent an overrun onto these vehicles, which would have been devastating, or could have been devastating. Let's just quickly check. Any sign of Hammer Tech? No sign of Hammer Tech. Oh no, he loses a Cromwell. Was that to a mine? That must have been to a mine. Wow, Telemine's going to come through clutch there, and that takes out a medium tank. And is Von Ivan going to be able to get back in this? He now has two Stugs and a Panzer IV against one AT gun and a Cromwell. That's a pretty good fight for the Germans. Um, and if he's able to ride this wave of advantage, he may even be able to accumulate enough manpower to bolster this depleted infantry roster. And once that happens, he will once again be firing on all cylinders and be able to take the fight to the uh, British player. Now, triple cap for now for Caesar. Um, so Von Ivan has to scramble to claim these VPs back. There are more telemines. Oh, sorry, that's an M6 mine. Uh, yeah, Von Ivan has to scramble to retake these uh, victory points because he's bleeding out so fast, and that's the crucial thing right now. So... Do we have Battle Phase 3? No, okay, and why would we? Fair enough. Um, so regular cap speed for these uh, for these Germans. The Stug gets taken out by the QF6 Pounder. Alright, alright, Johnny. Thanks for hanging out with us, friend. Have a good day. Yeah, everybody's going back to work. Like, lockdown is kind of slowly but surely ending here in this country, which... Um, Sure, I guess. I mean, money is apparently really important, so let's go and do money. Um, how is Von Ivan getting so much work done, man? He immediately grabs two VPs, stabilizes on 96. I think a, cr a Comet would be, would be really good in this game. What happened to one of the Stugs? Good god, I'm so bad at this. Did it hit the mine? I don't know. And I don't know, with the loss of that Stug, I mean, I, I want to feel like this game is close, but I feel like Von Ivan is still just one step behind. He's going to lose probably an MG42 here. Maybe not, actually. Urgh, he's so low. There are still Sten guns firing on him. Oh, he gets out. Very nice. But this Stug on death's door, the engine bust on the Panzer as well. Actually, that's about to be repaired. And, whoa, the Cromwell coming in deep. This is brave. Okay, he gets Ish, the Stug. Gonna need one more shot there. Bonk, there it is. Now the Panzer IV is done, takes a hit from the QF6 pounder, and Caesar, pushing hard here, wants to connect an AT grenade onto the Panzer IV with the boys from Wales. Not gonna be able to do so, but the Cromwell is here. So let's see what that can do about it. Stug again on the queue. What is this? The fourth Stug, I think. Oh no, these pioneers for sure will be lost. Yep. They were so close to that Cromwell. And this just looks very desperate now for Von Ivan. Very desperate indeed. Caesar just doing enough to stay on top, maintain the upper hand. And as soon as we can get Von Ivan back on the clock, which we are capturing mid VP here. Actually, Ostropin coming in to try and do something about that. The UKF sniper with 42 kills still lurking. Gonna hopefully do something about those Ostropin. Is this railway artillery? No, this is the um, this is some kind of. Artillery barrage. Whoa, the Royal, the, the artillery officer getting a bit close to his own artillery there. Whoops. Uh, what was that? That was the heavy mortar barrage. 
And uh, he's actually going to recruit a Vicar's gun and get that one out of there. Okay, I like it, Von Ivan. That's good. Oh, oh, he loses an AT gun. We can't be letting the German player have this. That would be too much. Is that an Ava? Ava. All right, this is what I wanted to see. The Churchill Ava is out and about. Let's see how many Germans it can give. Yes, we actually saw this is the first Ava I have ever seen in a game that I've been casting. I'm pretty sure. There might have been one from years ago. I'm forget. Hey, would you like a dustbin mortar? Donk! <laughs> and that's why we Ava. And look at this, you don't have to stop, there's no period of vulnerability, it just reloads over a period of approximately 40, 45 seconds. And uh, yeah, okay, immediately blows up a squad of Panzer Grenadiers with Panzer Shreks, an expensive loss there. Some flying dustbins indeed, finding their mark, that's nice to see. The Churchill of course also has a massive HP pool, so it can be a decent sort of ablative sponge to take the Panzer Force fire here. Was he able to recruit the AT gun? He was. Okay, that's that's massive. The dustbin, was it a dustbin petard mortar? Is that its name? Yeah. The dustbin petard will be ready here momentarily. 290 of your finest millimeters there. Uh-oh, Stug going to come around here. Is he going to petard the Stug? Does it do okay against the Stug? I don't know. Um, but yeah, 290 is a lot of millimeters. Outdone perhaps only by the Germans 360 on the Storm Tiger. Um... That is, that is just a lot of millimetres to be throwing at anybody, to be honest. <coughs> so, already, vehicle crew repair going to come down to help the Cromwell get in the fight more rapidly. I suppose apart from the petard mortar, which I grant you is a, is a lot, the, the Churchill Ava doesn't do much, to, I mean, in terms of offensive output. It's got like a couple of MGs, if I recall, but that's it's not a lot. But Von Ivan is back under the clock, bleeding at two and soon to be three, and... You know, another Stug? Uh, fair enough, I mean, you're going to die sooner rather than later. You might as well spend the money and have it have some in-game effects before you die. Where's this Ava going? Is it going to repair the Ava back in base? I feel like you probably want that on the field, just taking shots. It's uh, could have taken two or three extra shots by now. Um, I don't know, I guess I'm just a, an efficiency freak, but I like to keep it firing. And just, just because you can even fire from quite far away, just take some speculative, speculative shots if you like. That word always trips me up. Um... Engine criticals, there are 15. Pecker, Petard now fires. Oh wow, Datton dropping the knowledge bombs there. Petard now fires incendiary shells. Are you kidding me? Oh god. It creates a firestorm when it explodes. <laughs> and it can repair engine related criticals on its own. That is fitting for the engineer commander, the Royal Engineer Regiment commander. That is fitting. I, I like this commander actually more and more. You get the flamethrowers. You get you can designate command vehicles, which we've actually Oh no, we do see that use. It's a Cromwell command vehicle. Check that out. Ship shape and Bristol fashion! He literally just gave my hometown a shout out. That's pretty cool. Hope everyone heard that one. The CNC generals, yeah, right. Alright, big fight coming down here. The Stugs are gonna get the better end of this Cromwell. This Cromwell needs help actually. That is a terrible fight for the Cromwell. Hang on now. The Cromwell are going to die. Oh, yikes. Okay, we need more AT guns here, Caesar. We don't really have the manpower for it. Hang on now. 59 tickets and bleeding for Von Ivan. UKF forces are still looking pretty strong, but that Cromwell was a very important piece of the army. And now that we've lost it, I mean, two Stugs and a Panzer IV can destroy that Churchill very quickly. How effective is the petard when it hits a, a vehicle? If, if you hit a Stug, what are we talking about? A third of its health? Two thirds of its health? A fifth of its health? Like, I have no idea. I have no gauge in my head for how effective the dustbin is against, uh... Oh! <laughs> against vehicles. <laughs> it's so good! The sound it makes is so comical as well. Dong! Oh no. Oh dear. Well. It's time to take out the trash. Dustbin mortar. Ho! Oh, 36 tickets and ticking. Yeah, this is some really entertaining Brit play. This is um, how I would like to see Brit played more often, to be honest. Less cheese, less crazy stuff. Just let's make them a solid, reliable allied faction with a variety of playstyles and viable 
compositions. I think we're very nearly there, to be honest. Only a couple of things needing work. Now the, the, now the British sniper, though. This Panzer IV is really angry and would probably love to get vengeance for all the Germans that that British sniper has ended. But it won't be able to on this occasion. Actually getting perilously low. Oh, the AT gun gets one more shot, but it will not be the killing blow. The Stug's kiting back nicely. Piat toting Royal Engineer is going to creep through to be as annoying as possible. Tommy's likewise. In fact, it, oh, that's the fuel point. Okay, if he can just decap this VP, that may well be game. Because it will double the bleed rate that Von Ivan bon is experiencing. And it is rare that anyone ever wants their bleed rate to be doubled. So, oh, yep, yeah, that's probably game-ending damage there. I can't see how Von Ivan's going to be able to do anything about this before the expiry of his life in this game. Uh, and that's a problem if you're Von Ivan. Oh! Was that, was that a, dustbin, a dustbin petard occurring there? Oh dear. Oh dear, you can just see some poor soul getting shattered inside that pet. What a, what a, what a, what a frame for the game to end on. <laughs> hey, all right, well, we got to see the petard mortar and uh, it blew up some 13 Germans before the game ended. There we go. Ta-da. Um, cool, got to cast an Ava. Rare days, rare days, indeed. Um, I'm just checking around the field, seeing uh, what else, seeing what else was happening at the, at the close of play there. Well, that was a very interesting game. Crazy. I really enjoyed that one. <clears throat> the Stug G is almost half of its health and it stuns. Okay, thanks, Von Lutzu. Interesting. It needs to hit the back. Okay. I'm pretty sure the Petard does get does stun vehicles like the Storm Tiger. Yeah. Okay. Let's have a look at the live game lobby here and see what else we can catch. It's been a good few games today. Ooh. Von Ivan versus Nico. Well, are we going to make it complete the Von Ivan trilogy? Yeah. I mean, I just can't say no to casting Von Ivan. It's just too good. He's just too fun. <laughs> Can he take a win? He is 0 for 2 as we follow Von Ivan's ladder journey today. Look at this nameplate. That's pretty cool. I don't think I've ever seen that one. <clears throat> What's this nameplate from then? Some awesome tournament or something, perhaps. But uh, yeah, I, I have not seen Von Ivan um, for a long time, so it's nice, to, it's nice to catch up with his games. Nice to follow his ladder journey here. Uh, all right, what we're going to do whilst this one loads in, there we go. Okay. Um, fanboy detected. Who? Me? Um, I am going to bring you guys back to my face. I am going to um, just quickly take a quick break, check my emails, um, and just stretch my legs, give my voice a rest, uh, make another cup of tea. Um, so I'll be back in 10 minutes. Uh, let's say, let's say, uh, yeah, I'll be back at like 22 minutes past the hour. Let's say that. So um, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I'm really enjoying today's stream. We've had a couple of cracking games, and I will be back in just 600 seconds to continue uh, the Company of Heroes 2 amusement for you. Stay tuned.
Greetings, oh, what is up, and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much to everybody who's staying tuned in, enjoying the Company of Heroes 2 action with me today. I am now refreshed and ready to get back into the action, where we're going to be following Von Ivan on his ladder journey today. Out of two games so far, he has yet to claim a win, um, trying a variety of tactics, Assault Grenadiers, Ostropon, nothing able to, uh, to bring in the goods so far. Um, so... Pardon me, as uh, as we move in to our next game here, I'll introduce our players. Spawning in the east. It is the man I was just talking about. We're going to be relying on the Ostropon yet again. It is the Vermacht of Von Ivan. And spawning in the east, uh, <clears throat> it is going to be the United States pieces of Nico. Um, Nico, I'm going to go ahead and choose his commander very early on. Of course, it's going to be the mechanized company. There's another commander that I actually think is really cool. Um, you get a lot of really useful stuff. We've seen mortar half tracks like dominate for USF recently on the channel. Um, and um, the, what is it? The Sherman with the dozer blade. We've seen dozer blade Shermans actually look really good. Yeah, they're a little bit slower, but man, do they bounce shots better. Um, or rather, you know, shots get bounced off of them better. Um, cavalry Rifleman, for me, the jury is still out on. Um, and Combined Arms, I'm just... I, I don't even know. Is that good? I've, just, I've never seen it. I've never seen it do anything that looked good, but it might be good. <coughs> I just don't know. So, those are the ingredients here. Uh, we know the commanders, we know the players. And uh, the map here is going to be Nexus, which is a favourite of mine. Oh, as I take a sip on a refreshing beverage. Mm, nice. And uh, these two players get underway. Uh, <clears throat> uh, WC-51 truck going to be on its, on its way here momentarily to do WC-51 truck things, like disrupt your opponent's infantry and be very, very annoying. And then once it has its 50 cal upgrade, it can even be somewhat threatening as well. Oh, by the way, for, uh, for those of you who are wondering, uh, the music that was playing during the break um, is uh, Frank Klepacki and the Tiberian Sons. Of course, Frank Klepacki is the guy who did the music from Command & Conquer, the series, and he has his, his grasp of his own style of industro funk is just I, an industro metal. I love it. I've been listening to it since I were a wee lad. I've had it on, I've had it on me Sony Walkman. Mini disc Walkman, mind. I'm not that old. Uh, I've had it on my iPod throughout the throughout the early 2000s. I've I've just always had all of his music on, like just playing in my life through various times. Nothing says I'm pissed off at my housemates like playing Hell March on full volume. Just kidding. Um, so yeah, um, but of course with Command and Conquer remastered being released recently, uh, <clears throat> uh, he's remastered the entire soundtrack. So you can find that on YouTube. You can even buy the music. You can even download it on Steam or like wherever it is that you choose to do these things. If you want to support Frank, that's really cool. Um, he actually did make a band, which is Frank Klepacki and the Tiberian Sons, and they do stuff. It's not all great. I, I will tell you this. I don't. I don't think it's all great, but it is all very much their style and parts of it. Many of the tracks are excellent for playing RTS too and just for other things you know whatever it is you want to get done but for playing RTS it, they are fantastic it's, it's great music if you play Starcraft or whatever mute the music and play play some uh, Frank Lepaki you will have a good time I promise you um, <clears throat> or whatever RTS even 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 Company of Heroes or anything you know um, really 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 good stuff so anyway enough about that onwards now to uh Onwards now to this game. So Emma Duranke has been doing some reading whilst I was away about the Merlin engine. The initial engines in the Cromwell tank showed signs of crash damage because they extracted them from down planes. No way. Crazy. Um, do I have engineer experience? Um, only very slight. Um, I uh, Both of my grandfathers were engineers, so they were always talking and explaining to me when I was a kid. They, you know... They explained how four, four, four stroke engines, two stroke engines work, you know, the principles of a wangle rotary engine. Actually, even some advanced things, actually, like Bernoulli's theorem of aerodynamics and um, sort of aerodynamic design and how jet engines work and that sort of thing. Um, but nothing like formal or anything. And then because I was just always interested in like mechanical stuff and engines, um, 
I've always like wanted. I've always enjoyed owning vehicles that are simple enough for me to do the maintenance on. So at the moment, I own a beautiful little Suzuki four-stroke and um, motorcycle, which I can do all the maintenance on, and it's great fun. Um, so yeah, I've even modded it up a little bit actually. I, I don't want to brag or anything. I think I just had a delivery. I don't want to brag or anything, but that little motorcycle is squeaky clean, running in tip top, and looks stylish as hell because I've uh, done a little bit of work on her. She's a little bit custom now. So there we go. <clears throat> um, yeah. Um, no, I'm not really formally into engineering or anything like that, but I do just, I'm a bit of a petrol head. My whole family are. We're always going to track days and, uh, you know, rally days, skid control days. Like, my uncles, my uncles have owned some ludicrous cars. I got picked up from school in some ridiculous rides over the years. Um, that was fun. And, uh, yeah, they, they still do all of that kind of thing, so... Yeah, a lot of, lot of petrol heads in the family. Uh, all of that stuff. We do, we do love it. <clears throat> so anyway, let's talk about this WC51, because it is wrecking. It has just been pursuing Ostrapen and mowing down geezers. Um, tuning is not a crime. It, it does not have flaming decals, because I'm a man of taste, I'm afraid, Emma Dranky. Whoa! Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Okay, the tempo's picking up now. Wow, they're getting a bit faster. Anyway, all right. I just love Company of Heroes 2 for doing stuff like that from time to time. But no, my motorcycle does not have flaming decals because I'm a man of style. Uh, it is uh, it is black with a uh, silver and gold trim. <clears throat> okay, so uh, Lieutenant Tech, we're going to have a Stuart here. We've got the Cavalry Rifleman present and correct. Tommy guns are done on them. And Von Ivan, is it just me? Or are we getting off to another bad start, bro? This looks rough again. This looks really rough. <laughs> Pardon me. Emma Duranke, it might go faster if I put flames on it, but between me, you and me, that motorcycle that I have is not about top speed um, at all. Uh, it's um, Actually, it's a 200cc, so that, that is a tiny four-stroke, if you can imagine. Um, but what it does do very well is off-roading and city driving, and that's pretty much all I do, because I live in a city and, and I go out to the countryside and I do, I do um, loose road and uh, dirt track and green laning a bit. So for my needs, I'll tell you what, it, it might not be able to go much faster than 70 miles an hour, but I, I destroy any traffic in town, my friend. I will get from one side of this city to the other faster than anything um, on that little bike. <clears throat> so there we have it. Anyway... I'm just, I'm just rabbling on about my motorcycle here. It's not super relevant or strictly related to RTS or this game. So, um, oh, cheers, Emma Dranky. I'll tell you, it is great. Yeah, Von Ivan, his, his ladder woes continuing. And this is the thing, man. If you go Ostrapen, you will get punished if you skip that infantry company and your opponent goes for a light tank. The infantry company is... Sorry, the light and mechanized company. Uh, so, I mean, this Stuart. We've seen it already in the first game of the day, I think it was, yeah. Von Ivan got punished for skipping infantry... Com uh, skipping light and mechanized company, albeit that time with mechanized assault doctrine and, um, and assault grenadiers. And now he's going to get punished. The Stuart is just wrecking havoc out here and, and wrecking Germans. Artillery field officer is going to come out on earlier... <laughs> I love this. Going to put down the smoke mortar to enable uh, the artillery field officer to... Oh, look, he attacked ground rounds to counter it and he actually guessed correctly. He started giving crew um, squad members of this artillery field officer. But some nice plays coming out of both players. Good little interplay there. Nice little dialogue of decisions uh, coming out between them. That's interesting. Now... Uh, Finally, some uh, Ostrapen going to get to somewhere meaningful on the other side of the map. Will achieve the cutting off of an American fuel point. So, okay. Okay, Von Ivan. And now the roster looks a little bit better. We're up to double MG42. We're up to Panzer Grenadiers. Um, MG42 even finding that WC51 there for a moment. But we've still really got nothing for the Stewart. And it appears that Von Ivan's plan for allied light tanks is let them be. Let them rove the countryside. Let them lawnmower my loyal Germans down. And that is a risky proposition, man. That is offering up a lot of value onto the plate of Allied Supremacy. And I'm not sure that that is the strongest way or sturdiest way of navigating the early game. Um, I, 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 
Ostrapen are really strong, but so are some of the things that you can build from the Life the Mechanized Company. Ostrapen really, for me, they let you skip the Infantry Company, but I still think Life the Mechanized Company is too important. 222s are amazing, and pack guns are often mandatory to not die. So I appreciate it is testament to Von Ivan's skill that he's navigated the game this far and, and the previous games with no Life the Mechanized Company tech. That's very difficult to do and just not flat out die with Burmax. The way he dances out on the field and sort of gets things done until he finally has double Shrek on Panzergrams and then sort of kind of limp <clears throat> limps by with them until he gets his first Panzer IV out. I couldn't do that. I'd die to the Stewart. Um, I don't think very many Burmax players could get through with taking as few losses and... and Kind of with a Stuart just out there doing its thing, kind of looking okay. I don't think many Vermac players can do that. Uh, oh no, oh no, the artillery field officer is being hung out to dry. Oh, I think this is the second time today where we've seen um, Von Ivan just unforced error. Yeah, he's going to lose a squad for it. He's not quite paying attention. Actually, we'll get the trade though. Uh, picks up the lieutenant squad for it, so that's not too bad, I suppose. Um, and does have the double Shreks now on the Panzergrands. And they are actually up on top of the Stuart. Or is the Stuart up on top of them? You're not locked in here with me. Wait, the other way around. Oh, damn it. I messed up the quote. I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. Okay, got it right on the second try. Um, but yeah, so the Stuart is kind of eating the Panzer Grenadiers a little bit. Oh god, Bundle Grenade comes down. Now the Panzer Grenadiers are on death's door, though. Tommy Gun Toting uh, Cavalry Rifleman are going to come through. He drops a Shrek. But actually, he could, if he could grab them with the Ostrapen, they are a bit further ahead. He gets them. That's great. Okay, Ostrapen with a Shrek is danger. You want to get them out alive, please get them out alive. Um, but that is a good squad to have. That, that squad was so good, they had to stop OKW from putting Shreks onto their uh, core infantry. So there we go. Um... Looking at the game, Von Ivan seems to be having an off day. Well, perhaps he's just out of practice and this is just him warming back up. Um, uh, honestly, you think Ostrapen fits... Hey, creative name. How's it going, friend? Um, good to see you. Uh, you think Ostrapen fits Von Ivan's playstyle? Hmm. Maybe. I mean, they fit Ost They fit Von Ivan's playstyle insofar as he does whatever he has to to win. And Ostrapen are really powerful and good at winning. Um, but when I think of Von Ivan's playstyle, I usually often think of, like, shock assault units that pop up in weird, unexpected places like partisans and uh, assault grenadiers and just trying to trying to close damage and pound your opponent's face. But the days of that age of Company of Heroes 2 are long gone, to be fair. So, in the modern age, perhaps this is what Von Ivan's style does look like. And to be honest, I've not cast very much Von Ivan recently over the last couple of years at all, so perhaps... Um, Perhaps your knowledge of uh, Von Ivan's playstyle is uh, a little bit better than mine. Uh, yes, Daten. That is multiple Shreks, you see. We managed to... Well, Von Ivan managed to drop Horn off of the Panzer Grenadiers and then pick it up with the uh, Ostrapen, which is kind of... Pardon me. To be honest, that's almost ideal because now you've got Shreks split across two squads. You can let the um, you can let the uh, Panzer Grenadiers go up to three STGs and you've got this super valuable Shrek on your um, Ostrapen, which is, like, ep just epic to have. I mean, um... As I was saying earlier, that it, it, having um, a Panzer Shrek on a large squad of riflemen, a durable squad of riflemen, is such a problem that they had to stop OKW and redesign the faction around having different AT resources at different times because Volks Grenadiers with Shreks were just way too good. So, um, yeah, this is cool. Having said that, though, I mean, look, we're on three squads of riflemen with BARs. The Stuart, for which there's still no firm answer. I know, I get that we have Shreks, but that does not a Stuart beat uh, by itself. We still have no pack gun. And there's major tech out, for God's sake. Major tech for the American player. I mean, heavens above. Achtung! Major tech! This is, like, super danger. Uh, what is this? Like, this is pretty quick major tech. The WC-51 is going to... Is that going to escape again? Jesus. That's so frustrating. And... I mean, we just seem like Von Ivan just again has a small roster, the bare bones of what he needs to subsist and not die. But I've not seen Von Ivan with that sort of purpose. I've not seen Von Ivan striking for damage and, and causing fear and terror on his opponent's half of the map that I'm used to seeing from Von Ivan. He's normally a very aggressive player. So perhaps this is just Von Ivan warming up. Or, as I said at the, at the beginning of the stream, perhaps this is not Von Ivan. It is Von Ivan to the best of my knowledge, but I mean... It's very hard to tell these days in the game, isn't it? Uh, there is no other way to get uh, Ost... Uh, mm, no, not really. I mean, a Panzer Shrek has to be dropped somehow, and then those Ostrovan have to pick it up. Yeah, that's about it. 
Uh, the vet accuracy should affect the weapon, the accuracy of the Shrek, yeah. I'm pretty sure it does. Did he just lose the Stuart somewhere? Am I mad? I think... I think he just lost the Stuart somewhere. Uh... I mean, he, he definitely lost the Stuart. I missed it. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, I don't know. Panzer IV, though, is going to be the choice. So Von Ivan sticking to the build. It got caught by two Shreks. It died on screen. All right, air game. <laughs> Thank you. Um... It, it, it probably died on screen whilst my eyes were looking at chat or something. I I, I, I did miss that one, as I often do. <clears throat> to be honest, now that I'm streaming on Twitch, my eyes have got more places to be, so me missing things that happen straight on screen, which is a magpie specialty, is happening a little bit more often until I sort of compensate and get used to this again. Um, but do you remember there was a time when I would routinely be casting on one screen only and still miss snipers dying on the middle of my screen. I'd be like, where did the sniper die? And everyone would be like, dude, he just literally died on your screen. Uh, yeah. Good days. Good times. So, uh, Von Ivan getting some work done. Has double fuel for a moment there, which is really nice. The Panzer IV coming out is going to help him stabilize. Of course, Sherman will be the choice from the major tech here from the American player. So, Nico has the tools to fight this Sherman. Would love to see an AT gun from, frankly, either of these two players, but Von Ivan seems hell-bent on not building like the mechanized company. So it ain't going to be him, but I'd love to see an AT gun here from the American player as well. Sherman using explosive shells gets up on top of this MG42, is going to force that one back. Panzer IV comes in to redress the balance of power here, as uh, Panzer Shrek toting Panzer Grenadier is also going to come in. The Sherman, Dozer Blade finishing at an awkward moment, to be honest. Um, slowing down the Sherman when it desperately wanted to be scurrying away and kiting these Panzer Grens. But it's, it's not too slow, the extra health uh, notable there. The damage from that Panzer Shrek not actually taking off too much. The 50 cal squad gets Gibbs though, and if Von Ivan can pick that one up, he'd love it. The Panzer Shrek Grenadiers are going to push forwards a little further. What is this aircraft we've got flying around? That is... Oh, it's the Major Recon. Okay, cool. Um, so... The Major Recon can tag a tank? That is not Major Recon. What is that? Mark Target! Holy spoons! The WC-51 gets Mark Target? What? That's so good! Oh my god! I, I just didn't... The, the WC-51 is a super cool light vehicle. It does so many interesting things, to be honest. What's up, Mobs in 95? Welcome aboard, friend. Good to see you in chat. Thanks very much for turning out today. We've got a little bit more of a smaller crowd today because I suspect as more and more countries are easing their lockdown, I'm casting in the middle of the day on a Wednesday, so I think a lot of people are just back to work at the moment. Certainly in England, most people are back to work now. Got a little bit of a follow. Mobs in 95, thank you very much for the follow, friend. Appreciate the support. Uh, we're in, what, what now, week three of me streaming on Twitch, so still finding my feet, still figuring out how this all works, but uh, really appreciate all the support and follows. That's really cool. Um, <clears throat> okay, so Von Ivan, I think, I feel like this is the best shot at a decent mid game Von Ivan has had today. All right, we've made it, we're 17 and a half minutes out. We've got a Panzer IV, which hasn't immediately died or looked terrible. That's the first time that's happened today, really, I feel like. Uh, we've got a fine composition, double Ostrophon. I was about to say we want another squad of Panzer Grenadiers. That's going to come down next. Double MG42, that's all fine. Um, Oh, he actually does build the infantry company. Okay, so we do have the option of a mortar squad. I actually feel like that would not be too bad. Um, not right now, but as a thing to think about. Um, did he actually loot the 50 cal? No, I don't think so. But I'm, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, Nico, on Major Tech, um, has had the lion's share of map control, but is now getting beaten back. Actually, Von Ivan, for the first time today, it might look like he legitimately has the upper hand in a game if we ignore the scoreline but if you just look at the map and the unit composition things look okay for von ivan right now these uh these shermans though are getting dozer blades i say shermans this this sherman has a dozer blade and the prospect of additional shermans having dozer blades is going to make life difficult for the panzer four to be honest um <clears throat> are we on yeah he's on ap ammo on that sherman so that's going to be firing the correct shells um is it just me or are we not seeing crazy von ivanisms mate we're just not seeing crazy von ivanisms at all WC-51 isn't fun. It's the most broken unit in 1v1 ATM. Yeah. Uh, that might well be fair, to be honest. I, uh, the WC-51 is an awkward thing. 
what would you suggest, Creative Name? What do you think it needs in terms of changes? Because I, I do appreciate that it is... It's just really powerful. It's just, it changes the whole game. It warps... It warps the whole game. The only reason I think it's not being patched is because um, it's not so dominant in the meta that every single game with USF it's being that commander in this unit. Uh, but certainly the unit is incredibly good. But I, you know, what, what, do we move it back a command point or something? Like what's, I don't know. Um, range reduction, okay. Yeah. What, what about, oh. Exchange of grenades going down here, but the Panzer Grenadiers and the Ostrapen, there's just not enough of them to carry the day here. Not enough DPS. What 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 would you say then if um if we reduce the range on the WC-51, but also give it a hull down mode where it pops out sandbags and does a thing a bit like the 250 half track? Or is that just too much utility to be getting from one thing? Probably that's too much utility. It already does so many things. Um, <clears throat> so okay, second Sherman on the way here. Yeah, take away one or two of its hundred abilities, yeah, or, or add some abilities onto the Axis 250 half-track, or, or like the Kuba Wagon or something. Uh, that was a squad wipe on some Ostrapen, yep, Ostrapen there getting gibbed by the Dozer Sherman, nicely done. Um, the second Sherman's now out, Dozer Blade coming down straight away. So okay, I like I like the idea of, of go, going up to, um, getting up a number of Shermans with Dozer Blade, that is going to be difficult to fight. A Stug, though, is a promising ticket to uh, to break these things. It will have the range, it does have the penetrating power, and uh, even with the Dozer Blades, that Stug will be able to vet up nicely and get work done. Uh, so, okay, here come the um, American Mediums. Okay, the Stug is a little caught out here, has to start kiting, and immediately it does, but the Shermans are in a great position. If they could actually hit the bloody thing, there we go. Loads of Panzer Shreks show up, though, and now the, the Shermans must give way. And that Stug can probably capitalize on the way out as well. Oh, he doesn't get a disengaging... There we go, there's the disengaging shot. Man, Stugs are so good. Look at that range, man. They're so good. The ability to cap points probably needs to... It can cap points by itself? I thought it needed infantry to be embarked in it. Oh, or does it already count as having infantry embarked in it because it's got the vehicle crew in it? Ah, oh, Jesus. That's crazy. I thought it actually needed to pick up a rifleman squad. Creative name, Nico is Nagano. Oh, that's awesome. Whoa, he takes a load of losses, loses his officer and some riflemen. Okay, I'm not framing the action very well here. There we go. Um, okay, second stug. Okay, all right. I feel like for the first time, Von Ivan's plan of get this core infantry roster, albeit he's lost an Ostrophan squad, but okay, this ish core infantry roster, and then get two stugs. Sorry, get Panzer IV and then put Stugs behind Panzer IV. That's been the plan that he's attempted every game. And uh, I think we're actually seeing it work here. Maybe. Uh, 205 tickets is a semi-precarious place to be. Uh, so he does need to play... Make a concerted effort to play for map control now moving forwards. Thanks for the info, creative name. Um, also... There you go. Welcome to being a mod creative name. Everybody says you are just a mod on all the KOTU channels and you're pretty damn good at it. So, there you go. Enjoy. Don't abuse your power. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Thank you very much for your services as mod moving forward. Alright, so here come the Dozer Shermans. They're going to be rocking in here. And... Uh, Looking for that Panzer IV. Shreks are here to protect, though, and the Stug coming in from the north, but the Panzer IV is marked, that WC-51 pulling weight even against a Panzer IV. And the, pa and the Panzer IV goes down. Now, here come the Stugs looking for vengeance. The Shermans are running, so rear armor is exposed. But they have turrets, so they can still shoot back. Uh, any smoke here from the American player would be much appreciated. Okay, the Sherman actually backs up. This other Sherman now turning into the fight. Is this Stug? Does the Hunter become the Hunted? Does the Jaeger become the Jaeged? Uh, what is that? 50 cal getting gibbed there in mid. Uh, as Panzer Grenadiers flanking forwards. It's interesting because both of the Shermans now on death's door. Um, he finally tracks down the WC-51. Uh, I actually think that maybe Nagano or Nico here has hemorrhaged enough units where... Uh, where actually Von Ivan can take this. Yeah, okay. So here come the hunter crews looking for the Shermans and they will find them. Oh, quick draw. Oh no, the gun is broken on the Sherman. 
Alright, there it is, bro. Yeah, okay. Bonk. And uh, that is likely to be game, isn't it? The American army has been substantially obliterated. Yeah, Stugs do feel uneven, but, you know, the game has changed so much since the days when Ivan cut his teeth and sort of, you know, claimed his first skulls and, uh, you know, built his reputation in this game. I think it's healthy to explore new units, explore new playstyles. And clearly, I think what, what we're seeing Von Ivan do this morning on the ladder is just, just try some new stuff with Vermact. Like, I'm not seeing anyone else doing Vermact teching exactly like this. Or, or bringing this exact particular style. So, yeah, credit to Von Ivan. You know, we, I mean, we are probably witnessing practice games. If he was playing for serious stacks of money, we might not see these exact moves. Um, but, uh, okay, so the American player has, like, what, 360, no, 260. Has, has a lot of tickets to work with, let's put it that way. 240, I don't know, an amount. Um, maths. So, like, now... Uh, Nico actually has quite a lot of time to reassemble this core infantry and spend their fuel. Is that is that an easy eight? No, it's the 76 Sherman. Okay. Um, so the much more menacing 76 Sherman comes out. Although I will... I would say that this is actually fairly easy prey for two Stugs if they can get the right engage. Mm, the guns on the Stugs will cut through this Sherman. And uh, it's... Um, it's a relatively value-dense Sherman as well. So... Ugh! But it's got that Panzer IV like ability to just occasionally smite down infantry squads. Goodness me. Is he going to. If he gets the Ostrapin squad with the Shrek. Ooh, that would be massive. He's, he's lunging in. He really wants it. Taking. Oh, and he gets it. Finally, the three star Ostrapin squad with the Shrek, the menace that they have been providing this whole game, is at an end. Now, Von Ivan actually can call in more Ostrapin and pick that up, which wouldn't be the end of the world. Or he can pick it up with another unit that has a slot. Uh, we'll see. It's in quite a safe position. Unlikely that the Americans will be able to hijack that. Angry Stugs looking for vengeance upon the uh, Sherman. But it is long gone. And it is wise to be so. Because uh, two Stugs is a bit of a handful for that Sherman. But Von Ivan's taking ground. Um, going to be crapping up the midline of the map. Uh, probably going to force these riflemen who are doing some work in south out of the, uh, out of the picture. And then... Um, Oh, M MG gets set up in a nice position here. Bundle grenade coming down. Good fallback from Nagano. Or Nico. Yeah, get AT guns. Uh, yeah, seems like a good idea. I mean, I was saying earlier on, I think it would have been a fine, po a fine idea for either of these players to... Uh... Sorry, my phone was just going off. I think it would have been a good idea for either of these two players to get an AT gun, but... For whatever reason, they are stubbornly declining. Uh, so, okay, st uh, Stug's coming in from a lovely angle. This Sherman is a bit flustered, a bit cut off. Whoa, that took, like, no damage. Oh, that was the stun round. Okay. All right, so the turret is jammed, but not for long. And that's a dead Sherman. Whoa, he's going to reverse. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, actually, okay. If he's able to reverse around here and get out, then may maybe that's his only hope of survival. Oh, you've got to keep going, man. You can't stay, stay here. You're pinned. Get out of here. Get out of here. All right, he actually manages to survive with the Sherman, which is pretty well done, given how bleak that looks. He's going to side tech to Captain, and now he can buy AT guns. The Flame Pioneers go down. Oh, good spot. Thank you, Datton. Look at these, look at these BAR toting rear ash taking fights like champs. Jesus. Ducking and diving, bobbing and weaving. Hmm. Well, Von Ivan, uh... I like the composition. I feel like one Sherman 76 is not enough to actually threaten these Stugs, as long as Von Ivan doesn't make a mistake. One of the Stugs, yeah. Because Stugs are quite fragile, they don't have a turret. If the 76 gets a good angle of engagement, it might be able to make something happen, but... By itself, it doesn't really have the anti-vehicle damage. So, we need more AT guns or some other fuel spending choice. Hey, I'll tell you what would look okay here, actually, is Wolverines. But, obviously, we're not going to see them. But we've seen them this morning, and I am fairly convinced that they're a good unit now. Or at least acceptable. 
<laughs> Fly like a stucker, sting like a stug. <laughs> I like it, Emadarangi. That's a good one. Um. Jeez, there's a lot of hardware on this battlefield. Did he grab the Shrek? The enemy is yeah. Overrunning one of our capture points. <clears throat> We're going to go up to a third Stug here. What does everyone make of that? Surely you stop at three, right? Three is enough. Time to go to battle phase three and get the advantages of that, I think. Three is fine. Yeah, Von Ivan really does like picking a vehicle type and then snowballing it. I will give you that. Uh, so, okay, here come the Stugs. They get spotted. Gonna come for a push out here. Only one of them has the MG done, actually. That's interesting. They are obviously much better with the MG done. Oof, that guy got hit directly by the main gun on a Stug. That's got to hurt. I'm convinced it's now a logical Von vehicle. Uh, it kind of is. I mean, it, it is basically a T-70 that can threaten medium and heavy armor to some extent. And it doesn't even cost that much more than a T-70. So the utility is there, you know. And Von Ivan was a chronic T-70 abuser in the day. So, yeah, I, 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 I can accept that. Whoa, that, that, that rifleman got punted. Yeah, I can accept that Von Ivan is now a stug, a stug man. All right, this Sherman 76 has felt like an awkward choice, to be honest. I feel like maybe this needed to be a Jackson, because one Sherman 76 can't really deal with two Stugs, let alone three, so it's kind of been a paperweight. It hasn't really achieved that much in the time that it's been alive. It desperately needs... Okay, finally, another anti-tank piece. There we go. Something else to work with. Now we have enough anti-tank DPS where we can actually credibly threaten to kill a Stug. Um... Von Ivan's infantry roster is actually considerably depleted, isn't it? And he's he's struggling to have the manpower to spend his fuel, so he definitely doesn't want to be uh, replacing core infantry losses. Stug gangster. Uh, the Stug E is definitely better for anti-infantry, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, sneaky grenade. Not actually really achieving that much damage onto those Panzer Grenadiers. Good god, those birds are tough. Bundle grenade! Oof. Okay, these Panzer Grenadiers have to give way now, though. American forces get up onto mid, and that's vital. Victory points are going to be how this game will be decided, most likely. Ostwind! I didn't see that coming. Colour me confused. Uh... All right, one of the Stugs gets his engine blown off. The 76 is going to be pushing forward with the AT gun, and I feel like the Stugs are probably going to lose that one. Oh, the tank getting a bit ahead of the AT gun, there we go. Uh, guy, we've we got to slow down, we've got to slow down. There we go. The Shrek is back on some, some uh, Ost, 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 Ostrobin. Okay, cancels the Ostwin, goes for the Panzer IV. I think that does make a lot more sense. Why do we not go for Battle Phase Three though? I, I really like Battle Phase Three now, because Brumbars are really good. And... Um, so is having 25% cheaper reinforce and capture rate. Although I suppose if you've got no infantry alive, then that doesn't really matter much. So, all right, Von Ivan, who needs who needs cheaper reinforce and faster capture times? You know, not Von Ivan. So, wow. Losing all the Panzer Grenadiers over that last phase of play. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's, yeah the Stuggy is indeed a doctrinal unit, right? <clears throat> <clears throat> okay another sherman 76 this makes a lot of sense so we're gonna have an armor battle here but i feel like von ivan actually doesn't really have the staying power to take the map and he's under a triple cap 165 and ticking this one could be over fast all the american player really has to do is deflect three squads of infantry and he has four machine guns not not even counting all of the other supporting infantry to do this um so yeah, I suppose Von Ivan now does have the pop cap for seven stugs, sure. But you can't win with seven stugs, and Von Ivan may be about to find that out. Here comes the second Sherman 76. And I I feel like this game is essentially at, sort of over now. Further engagements by Von Ivan are a bit academic. Shit. 
Shovin76 gets caught out. You lose. Game over. You mess with the Stugs. Oh, good God. Stugs are okay against vehicles for sure. Look at this micro. It's actually not too bad. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, that's a dead Sherman. Bye-bye, buddy. Stugs have got rate of fire, my friend. You lose. That's a railway. Ooh! Bit close to the Panzer IV there. But he does take out the AT gun. Hang on a second. The American player has no AT against a Von Ivan who has five vehicles in a second. No AT versus five vehicles. No AT versus five vehicles. But Von Ivan can't capture ve can't capture points. Has no infantry. Needs to capture points. Has no infantry. So it's like, what a strange game. Both of the players are like utterly without the resource that they most crucially need. <laughs> so bizarre. But of course, in this dynamic, if it continues, there can be only one winner, and that will be Nico or Nagano. Because, uh, you know, if you hold the victory points and your opponent does not, you win the game. That's why they call them that. So, you know, I feel like Von Ivan is definitely out here living his best life, and I'm really glad that we got to experience this, you know? Like, he is living, but until he loses. <laughs> All right, so, okay, German, German boots get on one of the VPs. That's massive. So if he caps that, that will that will cut in three the rate of bleed from three per tick to one. Uh, American riflemen doing their damnedest to prevent anything from, from happening to this VP. Oh, the, right, the, the major. Oh, we've got to get the major out of here. And uh, what a weird game. Nico now... I feel like even a Jackson is a liability. Honestly, the best thing is just AT guns. He just needs loads of AT guns. Um, look at Von Ivan's. Like he, he kind of doesn't really get the pintle mounted MG on like many of his vehicles either. He's had the munitions. He put it into railway artillery. Um, so that's interesting as well. Just loads of interesting stuff that Von Ivan is showing us today. Um, All right, one AT gun, going to pick off this Panzer IV. Boom! That is a good start in life. You cannot ask for better. Actually, was that a, that was a rifle grenade off the rifleman who actually got the kill, though. Vehicles destroyed, one. Nice. Whoops. Come on, stay mouse. Um, all right, he loses the Panzer IV. That leaves only four Stugs. <laughs> and uh, Nico is building more AT guns. I think that's the appropriate choice. Um, um, Germans do get onto the north, so that is a concern because now von Ivan is out from under the clock, and we we have to prevent this silliness from going on. Because if it goes on, he can recuperate his infantry roster, and then uh, he might be able to drag the game out, and it could be super annoying. And you don't really want to beat these four stugs. If you're Nico, you don't have to. You don't want to worry about destroying them. You want to push von Ivan out of the game in less than a minute by holding onto the VPs. Having to destroy these stugs and actually fight them is going to be really annoying. We just want to win the game, please. You know, that's the American position here. Dear God, is, is Von Ivan about to get a triple cap? This is just insane. What am I seeing? Uh, well, there, I mean, there are two AT guns now for Nico, but if the Stugs and the infantry manage to take a fight so in some way that the fragile AT guns are destroyed or taken out, um, then Von Ivan's back in this, you know? Okay, one of the Stugs getting caught out by an AT gun here, but it, I mean, if he has to... Nico has to babysit these AT guns so hard, because if anything happens to them, then this game, which we basically won as the Americans here, I feel like Nico essentially won this game. But you have to close the door fully, and 40 tickets do presently remain for the German player. Uh, and, and Americans are actually having trouble. We're going to capture South, but we didn't get North, so Von Ivan is not under the clock yet. And every second that goes by, Von Ivan is getting manpower to rebuy infantry. Or even knowing Von Ivan to buy stugs or whatever. Um, but seriously, he's, he, he should be rebuying infantry so he can push onto these VPs. Another squad of Ostrovan, for example, would be probably sufficient. So... And Nico just... Probably needs to save for Jackson now. I think if you have Jackson, two AT guns... All right, here's my plan, right? You get Jackson, you get two AT guns. You position the AT guns, one here, one here, and you put the Jackson there, and then you hold these two points, and you harass this one with flanking infantry, and you bleed Von Ivan out. That's how I think that Nico needs to win. That's what I think you do. Because 
you, you you have to keep your AT resources together. You cannot split up your AT guns and the Jackson. That is, you lose. Um, so um, that's that's what I think you need to do. You just you you position your AT resources so that they cover as much of the map, or certainly two of the victory points, and then you make the game Von Ivan's problem. He has to come to you. So there we go. Hey, this one. Good to see you in chat, there, friend. So it looks like Nico is actually going to take the game here at last. Establishes the triple cap, and there's just no Germans out on the map near enough to any of these VPs. I think maybe to capture them, but I mean, Nico has so many MGs that that really ought to be over. There's just no way of getting out onto the map fast enough through these MGs. Oh no, he moves the AT guns. Oh Christ, this is what I was worried about. Oh no, now he loses the AT guns and the Stugs, which now have all pinto mount MGs. Oh no. Stugs are pretty good, man. Vermac players should build them more. They should build them more. I mean, he's going to lose this game, but it was kind of weirdly scary close at the end. Did you know that a Stug is just 90 fuel? For, for how dangerous the unit is... I mean, obviously it's balanced by having some really severe pronounced weaknesses, but good God, the Stug is good, isn't it? Uh, mm. All right, well, that's 0 for 3 for Von Ivan today on the ladder. A little bit of an awkward time, but I think clearly, as I said earlier, he's not playing super seriously. Von Ivan is, exper is, is um, experimenting with some different uh, builds and compositions and some different design space with what to be doing, and that's fine, you know? And also, perhaps he hasn't been playing a lot recently, and so he's using this as an opportunity to sort of warm back up into the game and... Uh, Perhaps ahead of uh, some kind of tournament that's coming. But, um... Oh, yeah, Zooks would have been clever, actually. Yeah, good good point, creative name. Okay. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Quirts, Quirits versus Coes. That's likely to be good. <laughs> Tura Machine. Ah! Hang on a second. Okay, goodness knows who this is. Um, but um, but Caesar is really an, an accomplished British player. I really am I'm enjoying watching Caesar. So actually, I think I'm going to cast this game, Crossing in the Woods, because it's got OKW as well. And I kind of want to feel it. Creative name. The Tiramashit is PGA. Uh, yeah, let, let's cast this game because it's Crossing in the Woods is a beautiful map, and we've not had that today. UKF versus OKW is a fine matchup, and we've not had OKW for a long time actually, not properly. Oh, it might be it might be Asia Mint. Okay, well, <clears throat> it's someone. <clears throat> Goddamn, Company Pure's two players constantly changing up their IDs and their icons and their names and everything. All right, looks like we got a two-minute delay until the start of this one. Um, there is no RTS you can play in two minutes. If there was another game, I could just like boop open up and then like quickly play in two minutes how sick would that be if there was like a five minute rts game that would be so fun uh but there isn't one actually mm, so we can't exactly do that um we've already talked about hmm we've already talked about command and conquer three kane's wrath and frank kaplaki let's just look for uh Oh, am I really gonna? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna talk about that actually. There is another game coming out that I'm like semi excited about, um, which I was gonna talk about, but it's also shh, it's being developed by EA, and I hate EA, and I won't promote their wares on my channel. It's probably gonna be awful because it's being promoted by them. Okay. Um, what was the name of that? Um, what was the name of the uh, steampunk company of heroes that's coming out? I'm definitely not talking about that, Datton. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea, Emma Dranke. I could show off some decks if I had any. Um, I could show you my Steel Division 1 decks, but in Steel Division 2, I don't have any decks that I'm very proud of yet. I'm still figuring that game out. Um, 
Iron Harvest, that's the one. Let's have a look at Iron Harvest. Does that have a release date yet? Da -da 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 -da. First of September! We've got a release date. Oh my god! Oh, you can bet I'm going to be casting the hell out of that. Does it have replays? If it has re... I, for some reason, people seem to think... And I, I, I shouldn't rant at RTS developers, but... There have been a spate of RTSs that have been released, and there are no without replay support. And if you don't have replay support, you really just will not have a competitive scene because people can't analyze builds. Um, so, I really hope that um, Company of Heroes, that um, Iron Harvest, has replays and lobbies and a ladder. Uh, it's got some issues, but it's got potential. Interesting, Daten. Okay. Um, yeah, September for that one. That's actually like relatively soon. That's like two and a half ish months like something like that um cool that's exciting all right um <clears throat> spawning in the north here as the okw player on crossing in the woods it is tira my shit or i'm just gonna call tira probably and spawning in the south uh having cast a game of them already today um i'm very impressed with their ukf style it's gonna be caesar um, yeah, Caesar just playing a sort of no frills, no cheese um, UKF style. Uh, playing without the AEC, at least in that last game. And uh, using a UKF sniper who survived the whole game. Um, just uh, doing really well. Okay, apparently... Okay, hey Jibber Jabber Jobber, good to see you there, friend. Um, apparently, yeah, uh, Tiramisu is PGA, who's salty at Tiramisu. Awesome. Awesome. Ah, oh, I love a bit of a plot. I love a bit of emotion. Here's the funny thing, as these two players move on out onto the map and just sort of get their opening build stuff done and there's not a lot to talk about. Here's the thing, right? Even the most dry and boring activity or sport or, competi or competition can become really amazingly fun and entertaining if there is a human story that sells it. A really good example of this is Formula One. Formula One is incredibly boring to sit and watch. Like, if you try and sit and watch, and literally sit and watch an entire Formula One race, some people can do it, but most people, it's too boring. It's like it's like 90 plus minutes of images of cars rapidly going around the same bit of tarmac. Um, but what makes Formula One exciting is the fact that these cars cost millions and millions and millions of pounds to develop, and that gives jobs to tens of thousands of people. And there's so much money and excitement and prestige on the line that you get these human stories that come out of it. You get the personalities of drivers, you get the decisions of teams and team bosses, and you get the relationships between all these interesting characters, and it all gets drawn into this kind of, I don't want to say soap opera, but you're getting towards that kind of thing. And that's the appeal of Formula One, really. That's the appeal um, for the majority of viewers. Um, and it's, it's the same with a lot of sports that are very dry, but are sold on a human aspect. And in RTS, I actually would love if the human aspect was more well-developed. And I do appreciate efforts by Relic and other um, developers to sort of, you know, make the players more personable, give them a space to display their bio, um, have interviews with them, um, and, you know, in tournaments and things for, other, for, for, for RTSs that actually have real-life sort of physical tournaments, you know, you know interviews and get, letting the players talk to each other and having a bit of... That sort of... That human story is an, an area of RTS esports which is criminally underdeveloped and uh, needs to be given more room to shine. For the longest time, that was a criticism, I think, which could apply to all of esports, but um, other, other types of esports have caught up. When you watch Counter-Strike... When you watch Dota, when you watch League of Legends, um, which I do occasionally from time to time. I'm not saying I like the games or anything like that, but I do tune in because they're really big esports and I like to be in touch with what's happening in esports because I find it fascinating to watch it develop. And uh, they are much better at um, the way they frame interviews and the way they frame their pre-game and post-game sort of show and discussion um, to, to, to show you and sell the human story. And RTS is not even on the scale yet. They're not even trying. Even things like the GSL, which has a tiny bit of letting you see the character of these people who are playing these games. Even GSL is super out of touch and very formulaic and stuck in an 
a mindset which needs revolutionizing for the modern age of presentation, in my opinion. So um, what, what I'm saying is I find it really nice when uh, we get CPGA get pissed off at someone and change his name to Tiramisu because I just cast Company of Heroes 2 and there's no real opportunity for me to interact with these players so I can't sell the human story at all pretty much ever. But here I can, because now we know this is PGA, and he's pissed off at Tiramisu, and that's funny. I like that. So there we go. Yeah, darts is a lot more exciting than most sports. Darts, 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 you get to drink a lot more beer than most sports, and that makes it exciting. Uh, chess solved the last of it, lack of explosions by creating chess boxing. Yeah, and that is good fun. Uh, chess boxing is an insane sport. I love it. But to be honest... Uh, my favorite form of chess these days to watch is um, like speed chess where like both players start with five minutes on the clock and like I think you get like a, a 30 second like refresh on your last turn or something like that. I can't, I can't remember the exact details, but that's fun. And and it's like played in like you play like a best of best of 11 or something like that. And it's I love watching that. That is fast chess. Um, chess is a game that I love, but unfortunately I, I don't really have too much skill at it. Probably just through lack of practice. Um, but what a great game chess is. Absolutely beautiful. Well, the thing is, a game. Yeah. I mean, RTS, RTS, it's harder to sell the human story in RTS because one thing that's a massive difference in RTS is you, it's not teams. RTS is not a team genre at the moment. It could be. There are ways to develop RTS games where they are team games. No one's doing that. I'd like to see someone try. That's a conversation for another time. Because RTS is a... Ooh, Vox Grenades. Because RTS is a solo game, that naturally makes players more reserved and less expressive because in, in moments of triumph and defeat, there's no one there with you. It's just you. And generally, if it's just you, you will perform better as a professional. And these people are professionals. They're playing for money. It is their living. You'll, you will play more consistently if you isolate yourself from emotion, if you take the good with the bad and you just focus on the game. And that's why RTS players generally are relatively unexpressive, very cool-headed, um, because because those are the things that make you really good at the game. If you can detach yourself... Oh, ho, ho, nice wipe on those mines. If you can detach yourself from emotion and if you can if you can go down 02 in a best of 5 and not let it touch you mentally just stay above it just not let that get to you and then slay your opponent in a reverse 30 well you know that's a skill to have and the way you get good at that is by isolating yourself from emotion and it's no coincidence that all the best RTS players like look at Serral you know look at any Korean who's won GSL pretty much in the game when they're on the stage when they're thinking about the game they are very emotionless and that's not a coincidence that's because that is that that makes you very good when you're playing a solo competitive thing um when you play in a team though actually it's the opposite if you are withdrawn and if you hide your emotions you will do less well because team games are all about communication and emotion is a form of communication so when you see dota players and counter-strike players rejoice or cry together in defeat or victory or whatever you know that's that's something which benefits them. If players ex exchanging more information and communicating, then they will do better as a team, and that's just that's just how it is. So, when, yeah, I mean, when, when you say uh, the story of trying to sell a perfectly behaved Korean player, it is pretty hard. You're right, but here's the thing: even given how reserved they are, and even given how RTS promotes um, emotional detachment, um, at least on the professional level. Those Koreans, they might look perfectly behaved on stage, but that is kind of partially an RTS thing and it's partially a cultural thing. But let me tell you, they are all hilarious characters. I tell you, like, well, not all of them, probably, but like, I can't think of one who I think is boring. They all, they all actually like have a great sense of humor. And as soon as they're off the camera, there's so much laughter and bants. You know, they're just, they are just regular nerds, you know, and we don't really get to see that. And it's a great shame. Um... OWL has plenty of issues selling per player personalities. Streamer participating in. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. It's amazing. If you if you can sell the human story, I mean, we are humans. Everything we do is a human story. Whilst RTS in isolation is very interesting, it is very dry. With, when you add the human story, you immediately have a watchable experience, which even people who aren't into RTS would probably be okay watching. And people who do like RTS get super into it. So, um, So there you go. 
Yeah, Emma Duranke, I mean, it's it's fine to disagree with me because I'm often wrong. <laughs> but also it's fine to disagree with me because um, I might not be right about that. That's just, that's, just, that's just my thoughts on why RTS players tend to be quite emotionally detached, at least when they're on the stage focusing on the game. Overwatch League. Is Overwatch that Blizzard FPS? Am I right about that? Look how criminally out of touch I am with like whatever Blizzard is doing these days. Okay, yeah, cool. Alright. Yeah, I haven't really uh, gotten into Overwatch. Um, I don't know. It just hasn't... Oh, British Sniper! No! British Sniper, get out of here! Okay, there we go. <laughs> Getting mine arse out of here. Only the British version. Getting mine arse... Getting my arse out of here. For king and country. Enemy causing trouble, trying to take one of our points. Okay, so I've been waffling on about human stories in esports and RTS and stuff for a good while. So um, let's uh, turn our attention to this game properly here, as Volks Grenadier is going to poke through and get this cut off. We've seen uh, Tiramashit have some uh, fairly unlucky squad wipes here and there, falling back onto mines. I say unlucky, obviously Caesar is putting mines in the right places and things like that, but still. Um, so, uh, yeah, off to a pretty poor start here is, is PGA. It turns out that this is the real PGA, uh, apparently, according to all the information I have. Um, and, um, you know, despite the presence of a flak half-track, this British composition is in a, a marvellous position. The Br UKF sniper that we've seen is not just an adaptation to Ostropen, is not just an adaptation against Vermacht. It seems like this is part of a core style that Caesar is happy to bring against OKW as well. And it's hard to argue, look at the micro, he's been on point with it, uh, and we've had six German skulls exploded so far, and I imagine that number is only going to climb. Uh, what did he get up to in that last game? Like 47, 50 German heads exploded? Um, that is quite a few, to say the least. Uh, so Caesar definitely with the chops to micro this, and now doesn't even have to worry about a uh, Vermax sniper coming out to counter him either, so likely to go on to do quite well. Of course, uh, Battle Gripper Tech is a thing, and so there could be a light gun, and that is a way where a sniper can die out of the blue to an unlucky shell rather rapidly. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, PGA, Panzer Grenadier and Griefen, Tiramashit, down uh, some 150 odd tickets at the moment, and with the smaller army, um, the, uh, now that the AT gun is out, Bren guns are coming down, uh, Caesar has all the tools that he needs to to dominate in this game and company command post is actually done as well wow uh so jesus we could actually have quite a fast cromwell here if he saves up for a minute we could actually have a very fast cromwell uh which uh pga is going to be ill prepared to deal with the schwer panzer hq is just now going down so panzer authorization and then a distant armored choice are a long way away so we'd probably need another Rakettenwerfer actually here from PGA which is the last thing he wants to buy he really wants to have an MG34 oh god loses the Storm Pioneers somewhere where were they over here I think they just got gunned down on the side of the screen Tommy's with Bren guns doing Tommy with Bren gun things um yeah uh historically you liked sorry I'm just reading through chats so there's some interesting discussion going on about everything that we've been talking about uh I think with StarCraft 2, StarCraft 2 is one of the most expressive RTSs. You can feel the difference between um, Innovation and TY when they play. You know, you can feel the difference between between Serral and Rogue. You can, you know, and I feel like in a lot of RTSs, it's actually quite difficult to judge that. Uh, but so that's one of the things that makes StarCraft 2 so amazing and golden. StarCraft 2 tries super hard to bring out the personality of players more often, and, and more often than not, it just feels cringe. That's because they do it so badly. They do it so badly. Uh, and I agree with you, it does feel cringe. How many winners' interviews have we seen that have just been terrible? Absolutely terrible. And how, how many, you know, how many, how many attempts to flesh out these characters have we had, and it just comes across so cringe, because they're trying too hard. It's like, it's like, it's like when your parents try and be cool, you know what I mean? It's just like, oh god, you just want them to stop. Interesting take about the win rate there, creative name. Good. 
So why is the south spawn superior on crossing? Um, creative name. Um, I'm just I'm just an ignorant caster. Please help me out. I love Caesar's Brits as well, man. This is a sick composition. Triple Tommy, double boys from Wales, uh, sniper, and this time he's gone for the earlier AT gun instead of a Vickers gun, and it all looks great. Cromwell's coming out at a real fast timing. It's out here shooting dudes like well before the 14 minute mark it was out. Um, so yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, well, uh, PGA here with all the work to do. Oversold Art now here, MG34 slung. Uh, but this is going to be tough. Um, we are a ways away from any kind of vehicle fuel. And uh, this Cromwell is out and taking names. And one Raketten Werfer will not be enough to stem the tide. Tommy's pushing with Bren guns. Volks Grenadiers horribly outnumbered. Black Half Track going to come in from a nice angle to control this relentless advance of Tommy's. But oh god. The Cromwell comes in and finds the only unit that can threaten it here, flustering the uh, flustering the Raketten Werfer. And things are going to get very difficult here. Even the Hex Pounder. Oh god, he's going to start sieging the Schwer Panzer HQ, calling in some artillery as well. Air bursting artillery. Which, uh, that tells us air bursting. Doesn't that mean Anvil Tech is done? It's a Valentine! He's using a Valentine! Ah, it's finally happened. Woohoo! Well, that's pretty damn cool. Valentine. We've uh, finally unlocked the Valentine achievement. Amazing. Oh, oversold art and getting gibbed, and I think I think PGA's done. I think he's over. We might not even get to see much of this Valentine here. And that's game. All right. Well, I mean, um, wow. Let's just um, let's just look at the relevant numbers here, okay? Number of Valentines produced one. Duration that the Valentine was on the field less than sixty seconds. Uh. And correlation to games won, one hundred percent. So you heard it here first. Valentine's are broken. Within a minute of that Valentine coming out, the game was won. So there we go. That's a statistical analysis. I looked at just the numbers. Those are facts. Okay. There we have it. <sighs> All right. I think we're going to cast one last game today. How long have we been up for now? Two and a half hours. Yeah, we'll cast one more. So we've got a game here that looks good. So I'm just going to load on in and then see how long see how long it is. Datton, I I I I I chose only the numbers that I thought were relevant. I'm not going to consider this sample size. That is not a relevant number. The relevant numbers were numbers of Valentines built, amount of time Valentine had been on the field, and correlation to victory. That is a neat graph. Representative for sure. You know what I can do actually? Here's the thing. Um, so this game's just loading in. Here we go. Boop, boop. Um, all right, so we've got six minutes until this game begins. So I guess I am gonna take a break and grab myself another drink and stuff. But then when I get back, I actually have a kind of cool, but not really, but sort of cool surprise-ish. Like, it's not really a surprise. Basically, I just did some stuff last night, and I think it looks kind of cool. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys when we get back. But um, I'll, I'll be back in six minutes, so that will be at 31 minutes past the hour. Keep it locked to Magpie 842, and I will be right back with you.
Greetings, what is up, and a very warm welcome back. Now, I appreciate that uh, I am rather ghostly and pale in appearance right now because I'm being lit only by my monitors, but uh, check out the stuff. Got some things that do stuff with light. Um, so yay, that's what this place looks like now um, when I turn on some of the LEDs. Um, uh, threw this stuff together yesterday and yeah, it turns out it just kind of works. It's like pretty cool. We got like the Predator helmet. I've had that one for years. So I fitted a little color changing LED um, cluster to the inside of that. Wired that one in, we got two lava lamps, we got some LED chains and um, oh wait there, watch this, hang on. So we got this, check this out. Ready? What do we want? Green? Up, oh, up. Oh. Or uh, I don't know, purple? Boop. There we go. Check that out. That's pretty neat. What else can we do here? Pink? Ramp load. Oh, some of them not picking that up. Oh no, no, yeah, that's pink, all right. Cool, there we go. Suddenly we're in the club. <laughs> you know it. Anyway, I just felt like showing off some of the lights. Um, I've actually got this. Um, these light systems, like uh, the seduction game is on point. I'll have a whiskey. You know it. Actually, I'll tell you what, one thing you guys actually can't see, like just down here in front of the massive TV screen, <laughs> Is my is a sofa bed, so like normally when I'm playing video games, I'm like lying back and everything. And uh, let's just say the seduction game is on point, eh? Nah, seriously though. Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna open the window again so we have some natural light and I don't look like a ghost. And then I'll be right back. Yeah. Cool, there we go. So, Synthwave Magpie, for sure. You know it, my friend. So let's jump into this next game here of Company of Heroes 2. So, we've got Spawning in the West, coming off the back of a really tough loss at the hands of Caesar, who's playing some sick UKF these days. Tiramashit, who is in fact Panzer Grenadier and Griefen the Real, from what I'm uh, told by all my stuff, by all my info. Um, and spawning in the east, playing as the Soviet forces for Mother Ruffa Russia is going to be Hireling, who I've um, seen give some pretty good games on the channel, I feel like, recently. Um, nothing specific jumping to mind, but I've definitely cast... Oh yeah, it was Hireling versus Coase, wasn't it? As more details are returning to me now. <clears throat> hey, Aki HQ, did you just miss the bit where I showed off my new setup? You were just two, two seconds too late to be in the club, Aki HQ. Gosh. Well, don't worry about it, man, because we're going to be doing some evening streams, and uh, as soon as we start those, uh, we'll see we'll see a bit more of this stuff be used. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, let's check out some of the commanders that these that these two characters are rolling with. Looks like Panzer Grenadier and Griefen Tiramashit going to be rolling with Fortifications Doctrine, Elite Armored Doctrine, and Feuerstorm Doctrine. Can we get a little bit of Feuerstorm? Nice, a little bit of Ramstein feel on that. And then uh, Hireling here, gonna be rolling with Guard Motor Coordination Tactics, uh, Soviet Industry Tactics, the lesser seen these days, and the Shock Rifle Giza, Shock Rifle Frontline IS-2 Giza. Three absolutely fine commanders, although um, creative name, are you still in chat? Perhaps you can shed some light on this since you seem very knowledgeable. Uh, perhaps Daten as well. Why are we seeing Soviet players roll with Guard Motor Coordination Tactics so often? I get that this is a not a bad commander. I get that all of those abilities are kind of useful and that they all do something okay and that they all support the core Russian game plan. But like, I don't feel like this is a very powerful commander overall. I think it's fine for people like me, but what is it offering top tier players? Um, you know, uh, I just don't get it. Oh, you saw half of the club. Well, that'll do. <laughs> uh, and yeah, Von Ivan is fun to watch, although trying some new stuff and being a bit experimental on the ladder today, not quite his usual self. But that's okay. Still a privilege and a pleasure to cast and watch the man at action. Uh, vote to cast the whole game in that voice. <laughs> I think that would get annoying quick, but um, that is an amusing suggestion for sure. Um, uh, yeah, um, so yeah, do, so can anyone shed some light on this guard motor coordination tactics and why we're seeing it like almost unanimously on Soviet players? And to be honest, being picked a lot of the time as well. I'm not saying it's a bad commander, far from it. I just think it's too middle of the road. It's like, 
Only three of these five abilities, in my opinion, are actually really good. The 120 more mortar squad is... Eh. It's just sort of meh. And the T-3485, I get that it's a great tank. I really do. It's a very, very good tank. But Soviet Soviet forces are not challenged for good ways to spend fuel. And the T-3485 uh, actually doesn't offer anything to Soviets that they can't already get somewhere else in some other combination in their tech tree. And uh, I, I don't know. I just... I don't, I don't feel like... It's just the best choice for Soviets. It's useful. It is useful. But it's not the best. So there we go. Um, Marcel973, what's up, friend? Good to see you in chat. It, it has five usable abilities. Honestly, the 120 mil mortar squad, I don't think that, that is... I don't think that is good. Because Soviets already get access from... If, if Soviets will almost always have to build the support weapon Campanaya because you will need Maxims and you will need Zis guns. And the mortar tube that you get from that building is honestly better. And it costs 50% less than the 120mm mortar squad. So, like, I don't I don't feel like the 120mm mortar squad is actually good. Um, it needs to be either more accurate or just have some changes because it costs 360 manpower and it is it is it will never give you as good of returns as like the base 240 manpower mortar squads that the that, 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 that factions get like unless I'm unless I'm wrong but I mean I don't think I am it just never hits that's the thing <clears throat> Two of them are quite menacing. Yeah, but then you're spending 720 manpower on your indirect fire solution, and it's like... That's not bad, but for the same price, you could get three regular mortars, and that's even more menacing. The sheer rate of death that three PM81s puts out is way, way, way more deadly. So, I mean, I see that the 120 mil tube can be used. I just don't think it's very good. That's, that's where I am. <laughs> um... Uh, but it will be a shock rifle frontline pick, which is absolutely fine. Um, we'll see how this goes. Oh, sorry, you're talking about the T-3485. My bad, Emma Duranke. Yeah, sure, two of them is very menacing. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, it, is, it is very menacing, and you can go a long way with them. The trouble is they are still medium tanks, and they still die to the things that counter medium tanks. And and when that happens, if, if and when that happens, but usually when... Um, you are hemorrhaging much more additional value. They're much more value dense. Any shot that finds them, any damage done onto them is actually hurting you more than damage done onto like pretty much like other things usually. So yeah, they, they can be really good though. And if you support them well, you know, it's nice to have a Panzer IV feeling unit as you when you play as Soviets. And, and, th and that is the, it is the T-3485. So yeah, I, I think the T-3485 is, is fine. It's good. I think it's definitely better than the 120 more mortar tube, that's for sure. The extra hit before death is really big. Yep, 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 you're right. Perhaps, perhaps I just, perhaps I just discount medium tanks when I'm thinking about Soviet play. Because the, the way Soviets are geared up, the way their compositions work, and the way they win games... I actually very rarely think it's a good idea for them to build medium tanks, just because of the way the Soviet force works. Um, and perhaps the T-3485 is a way for me to reconsider that because uh, perhaps I'm perhaps I'm being a bit too fast to judge. Alrighty, MG-34 is out here present and correct, going to be mowing down some conscripts and uh, they're actually finding a good amount of allied units under its arc, so that's nice to find. So far... Uh, it's going to be, well, it was techless, but we've just had the support weapon Campanile come down at probably around about the latest it can be before I start to worry. Um, I often see Soviet players try to persist with four squads of conscripts and some engineers for longer than this, and it makes me very uneasy. Once the Axis player has a machine gun or any other sophisticated unit in their army, uh, any of their light... Oh, God, conscripts getting hung out here. Okay, they're going to get out. Good. Um, yeah, then um, I don't think Conscript's going to hack it, but we've already got shock troops coming in from the uh, commander and the support, um, support uh, weapon Campanaya is down, so access is now granted to um, machine guns, mortars, and ZIS guns, which is crucial. It's pretty cool for Soviets that the same tech that produces their machine gun and their mortar also produces their AT gun. Not many factions actually have that. 
uh, maybe Brits, I suppose. But like, usually you have to make a choice about which of these you, you have to choose. Do I want AT guns, machine guns, or indirect fire support? You have to make a choice about either, sp you have to split them. With Soviets, it's like, no, you throw down one building and you are, you have those core tools provided. And the building's very cheap and affordable too, so one of the many advantages and luxuries of playing as the finest Soviet boys. <laughs> All roads, in my mind, lead to the SU-85, probably. <sighs> to a certain extent, you're not wrong, because the, the SU-85 is a so powerful and so affordable that if you if you build your game plan around getting one out and using it correctly, I almost always feel like that's the superior way to operate Soviets, if, if your plan is to play anything that looks like a conventional game. So, yeah, maybe I do think far too much in terms of an SU-85, but... Look, if you're not... If you're not acknowledging the power of the SU-85 in the way that you play Soviets, you, you uh, that's a mistake, in my opinion. Like, it's okay to not go for them, but if you're not thinking about it, if you're not assessing the situation and asking yourself, really, is an SU-85 the best thing that I should be aiming towards? You know, then you're doing yourself a disservice. And if you are asking that question, you might find often the answer is yes. <laughs> well, yeah, they're really good. I mean, not all factions have a great tank hunter like that. And for Soviets especially, because Soviet infantry and their other units can do so many things, if you just have one unit that kills your enemy's tanks, you can often just win. Like, it feels easy. If your opponent can't use their panzers because your, your SU-85 is keeping them out of the fight, you, you clean up. Like, and that's a satisfying feeling. It doesn't, the SU-85 doesn't even have to kill their panzers, it's just got the range and the hitting power that it just just keeps them out of the fight, and every time they try and nose them in, they take a few hits and then have to repair for ages, and just all the while you're just dominating them with Soviet stuff. Anyway, we've got a light tank battle here, as you can see, to the Panzer II going to be taking on the T-70. Somehow the Panzer II kind of actually keeping pace for now, that auto cannon blazing away. And it will be joined here momentarily by a Puma. And of course, once the Puma enters the field, the dynamic will change considerably, and that T-70 will become something of a hunted beast. Uh, the Puma, of course, absolutely adept at slaying uh, certainly light vehicles, but then later on medium vehicles as well. And, um, oh goodness me, something terrible has happened to this box. Uh, <laughs> his arm is coming out over here. What? Company of Heroes 2, you're so special. <laughs> you can just see his head in there. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry, Company of Heroes 2, the engine just still gets to me sometimes. <laughs> uh, uh, oh my goodness. Wow. There we go. Company of Heroes 2. Historically accurate. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey there, Bartolf. Good to see you in chat there, friend. <clears throat> Ooh. All right. So, uh... I'm sorry, that I, I've lost it now. What's happening in this game? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So the Puma's out hunting the T-70... Sorry, I got really flustered by that guy in the uh, in the in the in the T70. All right, yeah, the Puma is going to do Puma things to the T70. <gasps> oh, it rolled a miss. Oh my God, no. Okay, it does get the T70, but it's on borrowed time now. These conscripts uh, AT grenade is going to be. Oh, he needs to chase though. There we go. It's going to be off of cooldown in a second, and that will be a trade of a Puma for a T70, which feels bad as Axis, but it is actually 70 fuel for 70 fuel. Um, Oh god, just conscripts overrunning in. What's the cooldown on this AT grenade? Uh-oh, come on bro, we have to get this. Ah, oh, the Panzer II is actually kind of saving this. Okay, he gets it, there we go. Alright, that's fine. And now, uh, yeah, so that's 70 fuel for 70 fuel. That's fine, actually, to be honest, as Axis. It, it always seems like the Puma is actually a better unit than the T-70, so whenever I see that trade, I'm always just like, ooh, poor Axis, you know, because the T-70 is like... Actually, you know what? The more I think about it, the more I realise I am talking nonsense. The T70 is every bit as good of a unit as the Puma is. It just, it, I just, the Puma just kills things more, but the T70 is much more value in other ways. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, 
ba, ba, ba. We're just watching and waiting. Stuff gonna be happening here. There's a Panzer Grenadier and Griefen Tiramashit gonna be moving out onto the field. Has kind of broken the Soviet uh, position for now, so taking advantage of this window where a lot of the Allied forces are reinforcing and going back to base. To be pushing out, uh, slight scuffle in mid here, but uh, otherwise Axis forces making progress in all areas of the map. Uh, what happens to that Panzer II? Oh, it is now repaired and we'll be returning to the front momentarily to start lawn mowering conscripts. Uh, Aziz gun is here though, so the Panzer II not going to have free reign over the field, but ought to be able to make quite a mess of several Soviets as this game moves forward. Kettenworth are going to be popping up on the queue here for PGA. Well, that does make sense. Of course, we will. Uh, you do want to have something to replace the anti-vehicle capability of the Puma that was lost. Checking the tech here, uh, no sign of mechanized armor camp and iron, although it cannot be far away. That uh, is, of course, the natural next step for any Soviet player. And of course, Hyling will want access to the KV-8 and the IS-2, uh, two of the strongest options provided, of course, by the Shock Rifle Frontline Tactics Commander. Shock Troop's going to get a nice engage up on some Volks Grenadiers, but, I mean, really only getting middling damage. Um, I'm sort of a bit underwhelmed with Shock Troops at the moment. Uh, I, know I've been, I know I've talked about it semi-recently on the channel, but... Uh, yeah. Oh wow! The incendiary, uh, the incendiary artillery, doing incendiary things, and uh, that is a dead MG crew. No opportunity to salvage that hardware. And oh wow, he's lost a conscript squad somewhere. Oh good god, this S minefield. Um, yeah, he did lose a conscript somewhere. No, no metal detector for the Soviet player, so that S minefield is pretty deadly. No opportunity either to grab this MG34, which Hyling would very much have liked to have done, but uh, there's just too many Axis things covering it. This, uh, sorry, the Panzer II up there, going to make sure that nobody gets on top of that MG34. Is this gun going to take a barrage here? Nearly finds the Stormtroopers, but they uh, just move calmly out of the barrage there. Um, and uh, Schwer Panzer HQ, uh, Panzer authorization coming down. Looks like it's been positioned in this location, which makes a nice safe retreat path for uh, Axis units as well as preventing allied forces from grabbing this cutoff. So I like the positioning on that, it's very safe as well. Pretty difficult to get Zisk guns far enough forward to stalk that one down or hunt it down with the, you know, with the Zisk guns. <clears throat> uh, do you replace the Puma here or has it done its job? No, no, I think it's fine. You, you need to tech up. Um, I, I don't think I almost ever like it when an Axis player builds more than one Puma in a game. There, there are some super rare circumstances where I think it's fine and justified, but usually uh, I, think it's, I think it's tough. Uh, Panzer II going to deal with the shock troops there, and uh, a large Axis advance in mid. He's going to get a squad wipe on these conscripts, and that's pretty brutal. And uh, Hyling in danger of falling too far behind now has hemorrhaged a lot of units over this last phase of play. Not just the T-70, which was a good trade, but uh, just core infantry losses that we cannot be sustaining, and that is too much. T-34-76 even, going to be the pick here. And this clearly an attempt to not die. And I feel like Hyling now, this is, this is my problem with Soviets building medium armor. You just set yourself up to lose to all of the, like Axis forces are so good at dealing with medium armor. So good. Like, OKW and Wehrmacht will have so many ways of making a T-3476 look really bad. And, I mean, we're building a T-3476 into an opponent who's just got Schwerpanzer authorization, who has one Kettenwerfer, wow, who is actually opting to complete the tech tree instead of saving for Panzer IV. But what I thought was going to happen is that, you know, Tiramashit was going to, or PGA, was going to save up for Panzer IV, and then you're on a table where you, your Axis player just has better everything. They have better infantry, better, better armor more mobile, just just it's a horrible place. And how is your T-34 going to get anything done there? Well, um, I feel like Hyling perhaps getting a little bit lucky. Uh, wow. Okay, that's happening. Um, <clears throat> I feel like um, Hyling perhaps getting a bit lucky that um, Tiramashit is actually opting to complete the tech tree. So possibly angling for a KT later on in this game. Uh, we are building flat guns on the map. Um, what is this about? It's actually a safeguard against bugging out. 
indestructible zombie zis guns were ruining the game. The oh, fair enough. Oh god, no! Ah, he lost the he lost the shock troops. Everything's going wrong. Everything's going wrong. The T thirty four comes out, finds a building truck, but it gets cancelled because he wasn't because he was on prioritised vehicles. The hell is going on? Incendiary artillery comes down on the um on the flat gun. That will be good. <laughs> that gets burned down. How much are these flat guns to make? Anyone know? I just feel like I've never seen this ability used in a serious game ever. Um, oh god, Soviets! Oh god, Soviets still dying horribly in their spine fields. Run! You cannot fight here. Ah! Oh dear. Oh no. Oh god, he, he's, he'll be losing this for sure. Oh, he's gonna head south, that is wise. He cannot get Fausted here, and he's not gonna. The Kettenwerfer is just too slow. <gasps> it will get a shot. No, it won't. Oh, but he loses his conscripts. I mean, that is essentially over. PGA is just sure you caning, piling, and it's looking so bad. Hmm. <clears throat> Essentially, hmm. Uh, I mean, he rebuilt the shock troops. Wow, really? We can spare 360 manpower for shock troops at a time like this? Against an opponent who we already know has MG and Panzer II? Hmm. Uh, I don't know about that. <clears throat> Oh, I can check on the Storm Pioneers? Yeah, you're right. Oh. Or can I? It's not on the list, boys. It's, it's not on the list. It doesn't appear on the list. I'm sorry. I tried. It's just not there. <laughs> we, we tried. We tried. Okay, so the T-3476 is going to get the Panzer II, actually. That's a real nice pickup. Donk! And there's this gun actually picking up the kill. He's, 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 he's built it again. Why is this a good place for this? Because it reaches the VP, I guess. But these things are so fragile, I don't understand why we keep built two T-3476s. Okay. I don't know creative name. It's probably a bug. <laughs> I don't know how it's not on the list. It's just not there. Um, yeah, don't know. Although it is nice that I can see the cost of um, the other things, though. Like, I can see the left 18, 450 fuel, 350 manpower, 45 fuel for the Pack 43. Well, the Pack 43 is slightly more affordable than I thought. Ooh. Nice kill, Aki HQ. Um... So a Panzer IV is going to be arriving momentarily. This is just one of those really awkward games where the Soviet player just doesn't quite have a big enough army. The two T-34s are actually reasonable at the moment though, um, and may even be able to engage profitably with this Panzer IV. We'll have to see. It all comes down to the angles of engagement and the sort of the sort of circumstances of how that fight begins. But yeah, you know, there is a chance here. The trouble for the Soviet player. Oh, God. Look at how good these S minefields are being. That's like, how many units has he lost now? Three, maybe four to these S minefields? And this is the problem. Hyling actually just cannot be sustaining these like kinds of infantry losses. We, we don't really have enough infantry to play for the control of the field that we need. Uh, oh no, he's going to try and fight a, fight the um, Schwer Panzer HQ just when the Panzer IV comes out. That's rough. That is rough. Uh, so okay. Oh no, frontal armor of a of a yeah, of an OKW Panzer IV. Probably not going to be the way forward here. Actually, I quite like the idea of trying to get around that one, but this flak, this flak gun over here would have been in your rear armor then. Breaks the gun on one of the T-34s, and oh dearie me. And how many times have we seen this? This is what I mean when I say Axis forces are just naturally really well positioned to deal with T-34s, because it's just an, it's a very uninspiring medium tank. It does not particularly have good armor, health, or a decent gun. It's fine. It has okay of all of those. But the Panzer IV actually does have quite good armor and a quite a good gun. So the Panzer IV has no difficulty chewing through T-34s, as we've just seen. 
And, you know, that is a great start in life for a Panzer IV straight away. Nearly a star of veterancy. Um, oh, uh, but Storm Pioneers are here with the repair tool. They're going to repair that lickety split. And then it's going to be four squads of Volks with an MG and a Kettenwerfer and some Storm Pioneers, of course, and a Panzer IV against a T-34, one squad of Shocks, one squad of Conscripts, one squad of Engineers, and one Ziskun. Actually, he's getting a Maxim. Okay, I like that. If you're going to try to control or uh, like counter your opponent's infantry advantage, then a machine gun has to be the beginnings of that, doesn't it? Um, so, <clears throat> okay, Hireling. I like the choice here. Ugh, just... But I don't like replacing the T-34. Bro, I think we needed to save for something more pokey because you're, you're going to be very lucky to bring down this Panzer IV with T-34s. Ah, especially with a second Kettenwerfer creeping onto the roster. I don't want to be Mr. SU-85, but... I feel like this is really a time when you need to transition into SU-85. Or, or go for Zis guns or something? I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if we use the T-34s for anti-infantry and then buy, buy Zis guns? But we don't really have the manpower to be doing all of this in a hurry, and we need units kind of we need we need a workable plan now because the Axis player is just dominating so hard. Uh, but okay, here we go. T34 is gonna try and engage in here, finds another S minefield. This fortification doctrine really showing off what it can do for OKW here. Looking very nice. Kettenwerfer finds the T34, but shock troops are gonna come forward and force that one back. Nicely done. Allowing the T-34 to cast some extra shells into these retreating Axis squads. None of them available to be wiping, but it's nice to find a bit of extra value and wipe up, uh, sorry, um, vet up the Soviet mediums. Uh, shock troops get suppressed and sentry flame artillery used again, and that will defeat this, uh, this flat gun again. Oh god, these shock troops are not having a, not having a great time out there. Oh my god, these S minefields. This is horrifying. All right, Hireling, forget everything. Build engineers. Oh no, are we not going to get the flat gun? These things are way more durable than I remember them being. Okay, he does get it. Now we need to run because this Kettenwerfer is here and the Panzer IV is back and it's very angry. It's even going to blitz in. Oh, this is a dead D-34 then. There's nothing here. No, the Zis gun is not in a good enough of position. And Hireling is going to GG. And there we have it. Well, I feel like Hyling never really got set up to take any kind of a decent mid game because they hemorrhaged so many units just towards the uh, the very closing stages of the early game, or perhaps even the beginning of the mid game. And uh, yeah, you, you, a Company of Heroes Two is a very hard game to play if you hemorrhage all your infantry. So yeah, that's uh, that's going to be really really tough there. Now <clears throat> we've been up for three hours eleven minutes, and. Uh, that means it's the end of the stream. We've cast a great clutch of games today. Some fantastic stuff. We saw Wolverines. We saw Churchill Ava. We saw P Panzer Grenadier and Griefen. We saw Von Ivan. Uh, we saw um, Caesar, who I'm getting an increasing respect for. Damn, is Caesar good. Really, really impressive stuff. Um, just a really sick way of, of sensibly, solidly playing a really sane robust UKF composition so I really like that um, we're going to see if there's uh, anybody who we can raid but before we do I'm going to make a quick announcement so you all know I should have updated this slide for which I'm really sorry that I haven't so we are casting still Monday Wednesday Friday midday magpie but uh, tomorrow evening that's Thursday the 18th um, I'm going to be casting in the evening so Thursday the 18th I'll be casting in the evening starting at 6 it would be 1700 hours GMT so yeah um, I'll tell you what that schedule slide is useless because I haven't updated it but tomorrow I'm casting at 1700 hours GMT that's five in the evening uh, six o'clock for me and um, we're gonna just see if we can catch some American players on the ladder and see what's going on with them um, and uh, yeah hopefully it'll be uh, hopefully it'll be good times so um, we're gonna raid somebody uh, now, I had problems raiding Korean players before, and it looks like actually no one's really playing except for Shindy. Am I right about this? Am I right about this? Yeah. No one's really playing except for Shindy. So we're going to host Shindy um, because there's nobody else on. Er, there we go. Oh, for goodness sake. There must be an easier way of hosting people than this. <laughs> uh, hang on. Once I get this down, then we'll properly say goodbye. There we go. Good God, I'm bad at Twitch. Come on. All right. Cool. Okay. 
Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. It means the world to me. We got up to mid-30s on viewers there, which, given that this is a random Wednesday afternoon and, like, most places are back to work, that is amazing. Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in for the follows, love, and support. It's all good times. Appreciate all you bunch of regulars and uh, many new faces in chat as well. We've got a great chat here, haven't we? Just, just cool discussions and useful information and just high-level opinions and well-thought-out stuff. You all rock. Um, thanks to everybody who's uh, saying thanks for the casts today. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow at 1700 hours GMT. I'll put an announcement on the schedule and on Twitter and on the YouTube channel so everybody knows. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to try and see some of the American players uh, do their best on the ladder. Anyway, this for now, Magpie842 signing out.